What? The department head? But what I will say is, if people that sit on this board, and I'm speaking of trustees and lawyers that just spoke, and said nothing or did nothing when Frank Nicorelli was the supervisor. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yes, you saw the super mayor, Tiffany Hainyard, get booed. This was the wildest meeting I have ever seen. Right now, as I'm recording this, it's about 12.41 in the morning. I spend hours watching this meeting from many perspectives. We're going to break down a little bit of everything, but my goodness, it was a wild, wild scene. So let's check out the rest of the footage of Tiffany A. Hainyard getting booed by the people of the township. All right. I hope y'all enjoyed y'all stuff this evening and we got a ton of great information. Um, but what I will say is, is people that sit on this board, and I'm speaking of trustees and lawyers that just spoke, and said nothing or did nothing when Frank Nico Rowley was the supervisor. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got a better finish. So y'all like to check in and check out and see what else they have. I'm going to give you their check back. And then you can go over here. There's a problem here. She messed up. Don't be your face. So, do all you want. When I say, people step here, you can say, hey, you I have the elected officials are making their comments. The public is next. I guess I'm going to be quiet. Everybody was safe. I hope everybody, including Chris Gunnar, will be as active and as um, wanting information from other municipalities. I hope y'all go into our Riverdale, Harm, and ask all these questions that you're asking are for us. Because I don't see it being fair that you guys come to one body of government and ask a one question and then we give you the information. No one right there feel good about all the great things that we hear at Board of What about y'all? Including, including the surpluses that we have. Because everybody wants it to continue to be a shit show and not really show facts as it relates to what's really going on in our township. When I took over as your supervisor, I have increased every single department of the man as it relates to services to our residents. And you can go to each and every one of our departments and speak to all of our department heads. And they will tell you what we have done and what we have improved. If you want your kids to go to after school, we have after school for all. And it is free. They can learn the same. They can learn the same. They can learn everything. You out of order. Can I finish my thing? So, we have all those things going over at the regular location. And as it relates to the food, if you are hungry, we feed any and everybody in Thorne Township. So, we go to our food pantry and farm. We have that. And then, if you need a ride to the doctor, to the when library, that to the hit is the store, of the night. we take you for free. <laughs> These are all the things we do here in Thorne Township. It's free to revenue. You have to pay anything. And that's what people don't tell you. But yet, we have a surplus. So that's why I want to educate the public on stop listening to people that just negative and come and get the point and the facts for yourself. And that way you will know what to do with the information because you are benefiting from your residents. You. We have served over 10,000 people in GA alone now, last year. Y'all want to have an opinion on numbers like that so I can. That shows you that we really want to service our community. And in doing so, we have cut costs and we have 
basically created a surplus. If that's what you're, you're missing, because you're so in the mess that you're forgetting the fact of what we really are producing here at Fort Township. We are a family, despite what you may say or say. That's what we are. We can help each other, not hurt each other. And it's a shame that us, us, I'm talking to my black and brown community. <laughs> I really don't care for the that was making you know, know, Guess what? I am the you. I am the future. No matter what you think of that. I have made you all the No matter what y'all say. So what I'm saying is, if the same thing is going to do some work, good, bad, or indifferent, or however anybody feels, but what I'm saying to you is, please give people an opportunity. Hit the like button. Give them a chance. Stop just being up on people just because, and you ain't got no proof or no facts. Stop sitting here, pushing people to the side. Go learn the person. Go go talk to them for yourself. Understand what's going on in the community for yourself with them. Don't just go off of what someone says is all I'm saying. Because I'm here, right? Next would be somebody else. Somebody else's daughter. Somebody else's uh, son. I'm a pastor of a son. And I don't want y'all to treat them like that. So that's why I'm there in this body. Because I want to show them what it looks like to fight against controversy and stand strong ten toes down. And show them that you will be victorious in the end. I guarantee you that. All that y'all think and all that y'all won't stand for me gonna all turn around. And then you will be on the other side looking and saying, dang, she was telling the truth with the entire time. I have board members and people that have been stealing from the township you that still in this room currently right now. I told the media I told the media this, and I told them I had it proof, and they did not want to write not one story about it. So all I can do is just produce my stuff. When I put my podcast out and I spoke true speak. This is the Thornton Township meeting. She is the supervisor making the nice 200 and something thousand dollars a year, and the citizens are pissed off. The people have had it. They're done with Tiffany Hanyard, and it's showing. But let's start from the beginning. This meeting was, was going off the rails. And we saw this one dude, Mr. Connect the Dots guy. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but he went to the last board meeting. He is definitely on Mayor Henyard's side. I wanted to come out tonight um, as a neighboring resident in the village of Riverdale. And I like to see people involved in the media. But here it is. I have an indicted mayor that's serving in our community and we don't have this much media coverage going on. But we over here having media coverage here and we don't put out the good things that is happening. But you guys gotta connect the dots, D-O-T-T-S, dots. You have no senators holding two seats. And the deal was, if she became the supervisor, you was gonna be the assessor. What is the deal? That was the deal. But we further need to ask you, Chris, what happened? I'll answer why, the supervisor, I'll answer the it, why did the supervisor get rid of you from being the assessor before? You were once our assessor. Correct. What happened? Why weren't you our assessor anymore? Uh, I chose then not you to run. I chose to not be a to trustee. Run. Why? He asked me back. So oh, if, he I, asked if, you back. if we left had some type of bad blood, I wouldn't be here. Okay. Secondly, I feel this township board needs to be the ordinance means that we don't have township board needs to censor him. You need to censor him because he's given out some information that should not be given out. When you talk about being a government official, you are elected by the people to have duties. Certain things do not belong in the public. And you and Mr. Paul put this thing together. Y'all wanted to have this rally and this type of stuff. This is this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You broke down everything in this township, but you forgot to tell the people too you were in Las Vegas, right? Did you go to Las Vegas? Did you go to Las Vegas? The first Answer my question. Did you go to Las Vegas? The first year I did. Did you go to Las Vegas? Did you go to Running it now. 
So you hear him screaming, yelling at Chris Gonzalez, because obviously Chris Gonzalez has been going back and forth with the supervisor, Tiffany Hayard. So he is doing his attack dog thing, him and Keith Price. And we'll be talking about Keith Price in another time. But you can tell they're desperate to be loyal to the supervisor. But there's one thing that Jedi said about him in front of everybody. Let's check it out. And the interesting thing that Jedi brought up, actually, I'll just show it right now. Not on your work application. You lied on your work application. You a predator. You lied on your school work application. Yeah, but you lied. Okay, but you lied on your work application. You lied on your application. Lying application. Y'all remember that? He grooming girls. You grooming babies. But you grooming babies talking to her. But you grooming kids talking to her. You beating up old people, but you talking to her. But you talking to her. Boy, shut your ass up. Man, I can't stand these niggas, boy. You want to you wanna help being mayor? You will never be elected again in your goddamn life. Connect the dots, the D-O-T-T-S, the dots. Your ass is grass. You a clown. You begging. How much you looking for her to give you? She ain't fucking you. She don't like you. And you ain't getting no money. Nah, nah. You ain't going to get none. Get your ass back. You ain't going to stop disrespecting them. Stop disrespecting them. Michael, remember when you want to help being mayor? Now you'll never be elected. Beating up your grandmother. Grooming little girls. You got fired for it. Lying on your school application. That's why you got fired. And your private accounts, we know that you threatening people with them anonymous as accounts, Michael. Get another computer. Now you're saying, well, that's crazy accusations. Is any of that true? Is any documentation that Michael Smith is some kind of groomer? Yeah. FOIA requests are pretty awesome. So let's check it out right here. So Michael A. Smith, apparently at Thornton Fractional High School, he was accused of sexual harassment of a female student, grooming a student with lascivious intent, inappropriate aggressive behavior towards a male student, failure to follow district policy and procedures, failure to cooperate with the administration in official inquiry, investigation, or other official proceeding, including making false, inaccurate, or deliberate incomplete statements. Yes, this is Michael Smith. And it says right here, your actions have greatly distressed several students, affected their well-being, and disrupted the learning environment. I plan to recommend your dismissal to the board based on the following charges. Pretty disgusting stuff, Michael Smith. You probably should have been visited by Chris Hansen and taken in a seat somewhere. But this is the man that's yelling and screaming for Tiffany Hayden, which is interesting because Hayden also hired a sex offender couple years ago as well and got a lot of flack for that why she hangs out with so many of them i don't know i have no idea she brings this kind of element the arguing the fighting bringing in thuggish characters bringing in fellow predators this is the reason why the, this meeting was so wild people are, have had enough she has not protected the interests of the people whether you talk about the township or dalton she needs to go keith freeman needs to go and a lot of these cronies, these, these goons out here embarrassing themselves, protecting someone who is out there to hurt the people of the township. They all need to go. You got people who are just loyal to Tiffany Hanger for reasons we don't understand. And also, Tio, he's out there really embarrassing himself. Let's check this out. You don't understand? Now, hear me clearly on this. Before I get out of here, I'm going to say to y'all, everybody out there, say, before I get out of here. I'm asking y'all to mediate this case with Tiffany to a pass. How much you pay? Let's just tell me what the reason here. Get issues on both sides, goddammit. Both sides got issues. It's not just one side. It's issues on both sides. Mediate the conflict first, then we'll get to the side. Now, I'm going to tell you what the side is. I'm going to tell you what the side is. I'm going to tell you what the side is. I'm going to tell you what the side is. I'm going to tell you what the side is. I'm going to tell you what the side is. I'm going to tell you and deal with each other and charge each other with a bunch of stuff out here without no proof positive on it. All of us got issues. There's not one person in there that got no issues, man. Let's stop playing games. Let's stop playing games. I don't want no money. Let me get to the job. All I want to do is be able to 
everything and bring it back to love and have your child in the floor of the township. People always have naysayers. Listen to me, everybody that does the talking, cross talking, all that kind of shit there. Let me say this to y'all. I'm not the discipline. I'm not the discipline. It's killing us. It's killing us. I'm not going to overdo it. I ain't going to overdo it. I just want to say that. I'm for the process. Oh, you finna talk? You know what? Well, she finna go first. Oh, no, okay. Yeah. Right. All right, there's no problem. Nah, I got time. I ain't getting on my plan. Let's do it. They say, they say unrest is the language of the unheard. Now, this I posted several Facebook messages about this man and how he handles himself. If he thinks that Hanyer did nothing wrong, how can he investigate her? It doesn't even make any sense. I don't know if he's just trying to push his brand out there or whatever, but it just sounded completely stupid. And no one takes Tio seriously. So I don't know why he even wasted his time to even show up. Either he's being paid or he's ignorant. Both are bad at this point. I think people are done they're tired they want to know what happened in vegas they want to know what's happening with their money no one believes hanyard when she says there's a surplus they're tired of the nonsense they're still mad about what happened in the last regular board meeting leaving all those people outside in the cold in the rain and then you got sycophants people who are just desperate for a job or some kind of power or continue to have their power and their salary defend the mayor and the supervisor at all costs. It doesn't matter what she does and how many people she hurt, they will continue to ride with her because she provides them with money and resources that they'll never have otherwise. There's so much more to talk about in this meeting. I'm still trying to figure it all out myself. I may have to rewatch a lot of this. It was crazy. I mean, some of the residents, they had some good things to say, but when it came down to it, I think Jedediah's speech was dead on. The way they tried to push Shay out, trying to get him to back down, and he was able to hold his own. We need to continue to put the pressure on this administration because they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop, so we can't stop. So when you go through this, the total amount spent on tree cutting, $573,000 for one month of services. Not one of these seven companies has a contract with the village. This is a no-bid fraud scam started by Tiffany Hank. There's actually a really, really good video I want you guys to take a look at real quick. It's from Go Political. This video is doing extremely well. I don't know if you guys have checked it out with some of these great videos breaking down the psychology, the way she manipulates and also like this video right here where he was able to break down this Dalton tree trimming scam. I didn't even know there was such thing that you have a tree trimming scam. Like, wh wait, wait, what? 76,000 views in 11 hours. He's almost at 2,000 subscribers. Please subscribe to this channel. The guy has great work and he's doing a lot of awesome things. So this situation, which he uncovered, is outrageous. So let me try to summarize it real quick. There's kickbacks from the contracts alleging that the mayor Tiffany Hanger of Dalton is orchestrating a tree trimming scam involving no bid contracts where she is purposely or she's personally benefiting from these kickbacks. The claim is that the city spends 300 to 400 thousand dollars monthly on unnecessary tree trimming that isn't budgeted, suggesting that the financial mismanagement and obviously corruption 300 thousand dollars to 400 thousand dollars a month on tree trimming. That's not budgeted. And then she's also accused of manipulating the process to secure these no bid contracts while distracting the trustees and the residents with her nonsense, her yelling and her talking over everybody and just manipulating the entire situation. And it just shows like there's a lack of transparency. There's a lack of due process with these contract rewards with many trustees and residents reportedly unaware of these contracts until they're due for payment. So it's outrageous. And I, I hope you guys check out his channel. I want to play a little bit of the video so you have an idea of what what he's talking about mayor tiffany henyard's tree trimming racket is about to be exposed so how does she get away with doling out hundreds of thousands of dollars for no bid contracts and how does she benefit you asked for it and now you're going to get it 
we spend in four, roughly between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars every month or every other month on tree trimming. It makes no sense. It's not budgeted anywhere. It's not about beautification. If you're gonna cut the trees, cut the dead trees, trim the trees. But you making this a project of beauty just to be like they said no. They said no. It's not fair to us. When you when you see that, and now we know through all of the information that we've seen and allies and, and all the trouble that they're currently in, they're spending all that kind of money. You know, the money was going into the pockets of, of her and her cronies. It, it's pretty obvious, but let's listen to more what we have to say about this one. But so what is really going on here? Now, why do we see meeting after meeting, the same discussion coming from the trustees complaining about these no bid contracts. No one is against getting trees cut. The problem is when we see, and, and that's why I say, I know you said that we do RFPs. Yes, the engineer department does RFPs, but anyone who's attended these meetings haven't heard of an RFP being presented in a whole entire year and a half. So when we ask, we're asking because it's a concern. When I look at this warrant list, we have $352,105 on tree trimming just on this warrant list. But yet we have John Pros who come to us and say, well, he's giving you a quote of $2.6 million to cut every tree down in the village. So these are real concerns. What kind of shady nonsense is this? Like, what? Is going on. So I, I checked out this video and I'm thinking like, how, how is this supposed to be done properly? Which, because Kenya doesn't do anything properly. It's always either shady or just completely incompetent. So a proper contracting process is first, obviously the need, uh, the need identification. A public entity and identifies a need, such as tree trimming, defines the scope of the work required. So not trimming them and then cutting them doesn't make any sense one month. like It's a racket. There, there must be some kind of scam going on, right? Then they're talking about the RFP is the request for proposal. So our RFP is issued publicly, inviting qualified contractors to submit their bids. Remember, qualified contractors, not shady people who only like tenured. This documents what exactly is required and the evaluation criteria and how the bids should be submitted. This is how it's supposed to work. Then there's public bidding. The bidding is open, the process, right? It's open to all qualified bidders to ensure no preferential treatment. Now, this is the complete opposite of everything that Hanya believes in. Everything is preferential treatment if you like her. And if you can do something for her, she'll do something for you. That's how it works. You have to show love and loyalty. And she blessed you with property, with contracts or whatever. So, but the, the way it's supposed to happen when you have qualified bidders to ensure there's no preferential treatment, this, is, this stage is crucial for transparency. Again, she's allergic to that. And competition. Then... There's evaluation of the bids. The bids are evaluated based on criteria or, such as cost, experience, capability. Does this shit make sense? The process is documented and often involves a committee to ensure that you can defend the decisions. They're not biased. And if someone wanted to question the decisions, it's everything documented so it doesn't like people don't know what they're talking about or just looking to try to get away with things. And then the contract is rewarded to the most qualified bidder who meets all those criteria. And then and this is the most, another really important part that, of course, Hanya is not going to do. Throughout the entire contract period, there is oversight to ensure compliance with these terms. So the payments are tied to milestones, just like when you contract for something, you know, you make sure that it's getting done at a certain time, a certain quality. You have inspections to make sure that the work is being done, is completed properly. That's how it's supposed to go. Now, what do you think? You think, you think Hanya is actually doing that? <laughs> You think she's doing any of those steps? So somebody going to jail. And we can watch a little bit more, but I, I would guess and say she did not follow any of those steps. Where is the tree list? Where's the tree list? But when we ask about the tree list, there's a, a big stink. And all we're doing is asking questions. That's why we have discussion. So here we have exposed the scam. Now, just as trustee Belcher said, why would you pay a contractor to trim a tree only to go back to that same tree and cut it down instead of cutting it down in the first place. Well, it's an opportunity to double dip and make money twice on the same tree because the real motivation is get as many no big contracts that you can pay these contractors to go do the work and skim the money. You hear that? 
it's probably in the millions. Like this is a huge scam for a very small village. So we have some records about the amount of money and the different amount of companies that Hamid is using for this tree trimming, tree removal thing. So let me check this. Let me fix this real quick for you guys. Hold on a second. Okay. So you see all these companies and mind you, none of these companies were approved by the board. She has not put any kind of contract bidding up. Everything is no bid contracts. So you see some of these companies right here. Let's bring it down here. So you can see what's encircled, the amount of money is being paid. You see the tree services, tens of thousands of dollars. You see this one right here, Raul and Sons Landscaping. That's, you can look at right here. Look how much money they're spending. That's a, that's a good grip right there, seriously. Let's keep moving. And then John, John's Pro Tree Service. That's another, another one right there at $155,000. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. You see another company right here, KNM Ventures. Bunch of tree removal, tree trimming, tree cutting, whatever. See how much that is right there? $157,000. I should be a tree trimmer. They get, they get paid over here. And then another one, Lopez Lawn Maintenance. There's another 10 racks right there. What's going on here? So when you go through this, the total amount spent on tree cutting, $573,000 for one month of services. Not one of these seven companies has a contract with the village. This is a no bid fraud scam started by Tiffany Hanger. They aren't even approved contractor list. They're not even on the approved contract list. And you can find all those contractors at Village Hall. What the hell? The municipality is being destroyed. The municipality is being completely destroyed. Everything that they do is so blatant. Well, let's get into that and show an example of Mayor Tiffany Henyard using a very clever method to throw them off track and to reverse the situation and put the heat on the trustees and turn them into the villain. So Okay, what is that? So I want to spec the net, but okay. That's just an example of trustee house taking tree service out. And then the very next day, as I told y'all, don't play with God. The next day we had a storm and trees fell on people cars, people homes, and those same vendors that they took out all came out and cut down trees from your houses, from your cars. And that's what I mean about relationships. People try to destroy it by not paying people. Now you put the, the village in, in a hurdle because now it's like, how do you help the resident that's calling you? Y'all not calling them, y'all calling the mayor. So we want to make sure that we help the people no matter what. John Pro Trees is still cutting trees and he was told that there's no money. He doesn't have a contract, pure scamming. But you saw what she did just there. She, she used two separate situations. Well, the trustees said no to tree trimming. So look at what happened to this person's cars because they said no, even though in reality, there's so much more complicated issues in the, from saying no to the tree trimming to this, this situation happening. She, she basically blanket all the other things, the other, the other concerns to saying, you know why this happened to this person's car is because of the trustees, the trustees fault. It, it's very, very clever. And one of the biggest things about Tiffany Hayard is how much she is a complete hypocrite. So this is when she was a trustee. And it's interesting how she spoke back then to compare to how she's speaking now. I have a board that you have to go before you pay bills. You cannot, and I repeat, cannot pay a bill because you choose to. The entire body have agreed to not pay that one particular vendor, but you took it upon it yourself. Was, it, was, it was more than one bill, trustee Henry. It was more than one. It was several amounts, several invoices. Okay. But we all agreed not to pay that one particular vendor. You fought tooth and nail to pay that one particular vendor for whatever reason. So what I'm saying or what I'm asking as a trustee is that you report to your board and let us approve or disapprove because one of the invoices was one that you wanted to it's unbelievable how she is speaking now to what she's been doing since she became mayor but it makes sense the board needs to approve you can't just do whatever you want to do she said that to mayor rogers at the time but it is funny how things have changed over time trees cut down mayor i'm not gonna fight today i'm just telling you the opinion that i had and how it should be that's the structure. That's the order that you ignore every time. 
So what I'm asking you, if you want something paid, put it before your board, which is the board of trustees. Interesting. If you want something to get paid, you got to put it before the board of trustees. The thing that Tiffany Hayer is not doing right now. We put it in front of the board. For a total of $60,000. That was, was multiple no. invoices. That was not one invoice. And we said no to the $60,000. The Later whole $60,000 was not paid. Okay, I'm going to just say this and I'm leaving it alone. Later on, you got an email from Attorney Murphy saying that it was no approval to pay per car seat and sign. But yet you still went through and paid. All I'm asking is to stop doing that. Go before the body and get your approval. That's it. That's it. Thank you. I guess when you get the power, things change, right? So we have another video of him, Trustee Hanyard spin the facts on the behavior of the mayor doing the wrong thing. Let's check it out. I don't know why playing this game. The mayor is the overseer of the village. He signs off on everything. The, the, minister, no, the, the, the mayor oversees and signs off on the bills, especially at that amount. Nobody else does. So I don't know why Chris saying he don't know. He know it's the mayor. His signature is on everything. So he shouldn't have done that. That's why you have a board that you should go before. You never do. You First oversee all, us and you go and do what you want as usual. But she's not using the word oversee properly. But basically what she's saying is that there is no board. According to Mayor Rogers, he does what he wants to do. He's bypassing the board, not overseeing, but you know, hanger, that's her way of speaking, but that's what she's trying to say. So this mayor doesn't care about the board. The mayor wants to do what the mayor wants to do. That's what trustee hanger is trying to explain. Trustee, why don't you let me do my job that, you know, when you advocated to have that one lady's tree cut down, you immediately said, Matt, why didn't you cut the tree down? I called you several times to cut this tree down. So when we cut the tree down, now you don't want to pay the vendor to do it. Okay, so that's that's all you got. That one resident that been complaining for two that's years. We, a week, hold on. When I advocated for her tree to be cut down, remember you said I want a tree lady. You got We approved it. The board approved it. You took two years. Two years, Mayor. That's not true. You just that's cut it down true. now. Don't worry about it. I'm going to pull the tape up. And I'll that's not true. Page. Pull the tape. That's true. Exactly. It's true. So what I'm saying to you now, you're only doing everything. Every move you're making is only, it's political. It ain't true. here about the residents. Because that's if you did, true. you would have did it when we approved it. When we approved well, so why, why you don't do you what, say, we, what we say? Why would you when say When we approved so why y'all don't go do it? It just said, then the resident complained again. But we approved it though. Why would you say the lady fell down and broke her hip? And I talked to her and she said that was not the case. Mayor. Ooh, wait, wait, wait what now? What? I told you what it you said, which that? was the lady did fall and break her hip. If you would have went there when it happened, then I you would have known. So if you went I, there now, you want to make it a debate now. What they got to do with the tree? I talked to her son. Please. I talked to her son. What does that have to do with the tree? And I talked to her personally. Tree? Interesting when the mayor Rogers is trying to talk about this situation with the lady breaking her hip that Hanger keeps talking over him like she doesn't want him to talk more about what happened in that situation. Very interesting. Mayor, what? I you deflect a lot. You deflect a lot. It got nothing to do with the tree. I, I talked to her personally and she said, no, she did not fall down. Two and years. Her hip. Two years to cut a tree. That's All right. Is she lying? Does she talk about something that didn't happen? Hanger doesn't lie. That's not true. Everybody else on the list that don't exist. Am I going to get the tree list, Mayor? Can I have that? Can I please have the tree list? I don't know. So people can know where they at on this tree list that you say they got that they don't got. Let me tell you, in a lot of cases, residents want exactly. the trees cut down for three reasons. We do not cut down trees for cosmetic reasons. If the tree is healthy and it needs trimming, we'll trim it. But we don't cut trees down just because a resident said, cut my tree down, I don't like it anymore. We don't do that. Interesting now, because with this whole tree trimming scam, allegedly, it's about beautification, not necessarily about necessity. Especially the way Hainer talks about it. We'll we'll talk about that later on in this video. Mayor, can and, I have that and, list? And the tree. I don't know of any list. Right. But y'all tell the residents that they go on a list when they call in about a complaint. And if they lined up on the list, they not. I, I don't so, think that. Oh, God. Okay, I'm done. So there's another big hypocrite from trustee Hainer at the time about paying all this money, hundreds of thousands of dollars to these uh, contractors, these outside contractors, and how maybe if you're able to train some people in-house to do some of this work, it will be beneficial financially for the village. And Hayer does not believe in that now, but trustee Hayer years ago had a different idea. Check it out. So that's why the outside company comes in. 
and then you don't want to pay them. Mayor, I've always said train in-house staff to do what we need to be done. You constantly want to outsource everything. You can train those guys. That's why they're called public works. They should be able to handle half the things we got in the community. What Stop about? outsourcing everything, Mayor. And if that's the case, they go through trustee Steve's committee when they need equipment, need something fixed. So if it's a, a truck that they need to be able to cut the tree down, so we not paying $25 for four trees, I think they should get it. Well, then why don't you approve an $80,000 crane that they use to cut those tall trees down. Why don't you do that? Mayor, I have no problem with putting that in the budget. You know, budget is coming up and we can afford that. No problem. And in this video, again, Hanyard is being a complete hypocrite. We now know that there's some kind of double dipping happening with this tree trimming situation. And that's why we think there's a major scam. But again, this happened in 2018 and Hanyard, remember trustee Hanyard explaining how double dipping doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Check it out. Okay, so if you have any questions or concerns in regards to that, or if you are one of our lawn care providers, uh, please hold your questions to the end. But we will, we do prefer you guys to cut down the bushes. But also, if you think about it, if we have you cut them down and you put them up front, we kind of double working because public works still have to come and pick up the bushes. So I prefer to just give the tree trimming or the bushes to a public works and then let the lawn care providers just cut all the lawns. That way we not double paying. For instance, we have another issue where people- That, that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Who go cut the grass in the front, meaning public works, but they don't cut the backyard. So then they call the lawn care providers and that's another fee. So now we paying out twice. And we could just nip it in the bud and just give it strictly to the lawn care provider, and let them cut the front and the back for the 25 bucks. So just some suggestions, you guys. Just some suggestions that make sense. It looks like she doesn't follow her own suggestions that were happening a couple of years ago. So when Haney is able to do that, she's manipulating the trustee, these trustee meetings and using really good deflection. You know, Go Political has really good videos based on this. And I know a lot of people think that Hanyard is stupid. And I understand that. I mean, some words she can't pronounce. And, there's, and when she's writing something, when she puts a post on social media, there's a lot of issues. But there's certain things that she is good at. And she's a really good player. That could be a natural thing that she learned through her life experiences. I doubt she necessarily can even explain why she, how she does it, but she's, she is effective. Now the problem is she probably thinks she's smarter than everyone else. Cause it's, you know, that could be a little bit of narcissism. And the problem is with most narcissist people, they're not, they're not the smartest in the room and eventually get, they get caught because they think they can, they can finesse anybody. And eventually you run out of space. You run out of courtesy currency to keep finessing people. Eventually they, they realize you're full of shit, but you can tell she, she's really good at manipulating. So she uses, and this is typical politics, but to, to use that, that video as a sign of, well, well, Jason House don't care about your car because he said no to the, to the tree trimming. That's effective. Tiffany claims her campaign literature was paid by her campaign fund in a group called Residents for a Better Dalton. However, it turns out that this group doesn't even exist. So somebody going to jail. So Tiffany Hayer is like really screwed. She is in a whole lot of trouble and she's probably going to go to jail. We're going to check out this news clip. And we're going to dive deeper into her corruption as the mayor of Dalton and the supervisor of the township. She is really screwed. Let's get into it. Fox 32 has obtained copies of the two federal subpoenas served on Thornton Township on Friday. And there are two big takeaways. Tiffany Henyard is clearly a target of the criminal investigation. And that investigation is growing. Overall, it tells me that the investigation is expanding. It's not just focusing on the city of Dalton. Former FBI agent Ross Rice says the subpoenas revealed the burgeoning scope of the federal criminal investigation into Thornton Township Supervisor and Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard. So the center of this investigation is all about Tiffany Henyard. She juggles the roles of the Township Supervisor and the Dalton Mayor. And it appears that is not just a participant. She is the target. One subpoena focusedly squarely on her covering a variety of her interests, including two businesses that she owns, a restaurant and a property management company, and extends to her political fund and a charity named after her. She is screwed. They're digging everything. They're looking for everything. And Hanyer has been terrible at almost everything. It asks for all records, including personnel files, wage and tax statements, time and attendance, records of work performed, contracts, and checks written to cash. Look at all the things that the FBI are trying to get into. There's so many issues. There's so many things that Hanyan has done that there's records of. 
that shows that she has committed criminal behavior. I don't know if she's gonna try to find a way to get a deal or try to throw this blame on other people. All this is bad, everything. From the property company that is probably mixed with some of these funds coming from the township, the charity that's fake, the stupid Good Burger, and I, I didn't see Mondo Burger, but I know she has both of those terrible companies. She is in so much trouble and they're digging deep, really deep. The mayor and the township supervisor who are one and the same appear to be the primary focus of the investigation. The second subpoena requests a kitchen sink of township records, including financial reports, budgets, payroll records, and ordinances covering credit card purchases, expense reimbursements, <laughs> security <laughs> details, and the use of vehicles. All things that if you check this channel and many channels and you checked Fox 32, it's all bad. So many things that she has done that were probably not just unethical, but illegal. Mayor Officer Young put in for 303 like, hours in a two week like period. 303 like hours. Fox 32 has reported like extensively like about Henyard's use of a police security detail, which police say has hampered their ability to fight crime. You need security to protect you from questions from reporters? Yes, yes, she does. Subpoena also asks for payments and credit card expenditures for a number of township employees, including Henyard's top lieutenant, Keith Freeman, uh, some township trustees, and Henyard's boyfriend, who runs the township's youth violence prevention program. Kamal Woods he gets about $100,000 from that position. The subpoena also focuses on township travel, including a story first reported by Fox 32 and the Illinois Answers Project about a trip Henyard took to Springfield in 2022 with Dalton and Thornton Township employees, ostensibly to raise money for a cancer charity in her name. I have created Tiffany Henyard uh, Cares Foundation, and what that entails is helping everybody uh, within the 17 municipalities with Rule 2. I'm the face of the foundation. My name is Nowhere, sir. I, my, I'm the face. Oh, uh, you have a charity that, um, uh, from the Attorney General's office, is, uh, I understand they sent a cease and desist letter to your foundation? I don't know nothing about that. Um, I'm not crazy. I'm not You have a, a Tiffany Henry Cares, your foundation. I, so the Attorney General's office hasn't reached out to you regarding your, found, your foundation? So I want to set the record straight. I don't have a foundation. I am a supporter of anybody that's struggling with cancer. My mom had breast cancer, and I'm always push anybody that has that. If someone uses my name to push their charity, or if you say this is Tiffany T-shirt, people gonna buy it. Cause right now, consider what clickbait. People make money off of my name by views. So you just so take saying, my you name. You don't have a. You say you say you don't have a. I foundation. don't. I do not. And that's okay. why I tell everybody go do your research. I'm not on anything. to any 17 municipality. It, you cannot live in Chicago uh, to benefit from this foundation. It's strictly for uh, people that live in the 17th community. Tiffany Hinger Cares Foundation is here. We will help anybody in need. Um, it's not only just for Thorn Township, it's not only just for Dalton, but it's for the state of Illinois. We wondered who was paying for all of this, and so are the feds, who ask for records of municipal resources being used. She's, she's just screwed. That Charity was a sham. It helped no one. And she just spent thousands and thousands of dollars just to show that she seems like she cared about cancer research. It was a complete waste of money and probably illegal. Half of friends of Tiffany Henyard, her political fund, and charitable organizations, including the Tiffany Cares Foundation, which involved a $10,000 donation of taxpayers' money made by the township. It's very broad in the scope. It's very broad in the number of people and entities. So there must be some serious allegations of wrongdoing that they're trying to get to the bottom of. It's the second round of federal subpoenas. On April 20th, four FBI agents served a pair of subpoenas on the village of Dalton, asking for the personnel files of 29 employees. Wiedemann says the latest subpoenas are a welcome sign. I hope that the township finds a way to be able to 
recoup the damage that has been done. But yeah. I hope that the people that did the damage, I mean, there's repercussions for making bad decisions. Absolutely. There need to be accountability here. And that's what the FBI is going to find because a lot of this stuff is in plain sight of how terrible Tiffany Harriet has been. So this probe is going deep, deep into her dealings and extends to Hanya's inner circle. So we're talking about the top lieutenant, Keith Freeman, some of the township trustees, even the boyfriend who heads the township youth violence prevention program. All eyes on how the township resources have been utilized, especially concerning those trips and events used and organized for charity. What started as a local investigation is quickly unraveling into a significant federal case with broad implications. It's a story of power and scrutiny, and obviously the quest for transparency. If you check out some of Tiffany Hanger's biggest supporters on Facebook, they have deleted their profiles and deleted their posts talking about Hanger. I'm talking to you, T.O. Hardeman. Maybe you finally realize that she's in trouble and finally realize that this is not just a joke. This is not just an attack on a black woman, you know, a single black woman in power, but a corrupt person that has effed up the entire town of Dalton and effed up the township. Or you just don't want to get in trouble with the feds. People are finally starting to wake up. But let's dive deeper into this political drama involving Tiffany Hanger, some questionable campaign spending and echoes of past political misdeeds by this individual by the name of Jerry Jonova, a former mayor with a checkered history. This story is layered involving alleged misconduct and financial discrepancies that can rival any political movie, any political show. So what the hell am I talking about? Jerry Jonova checkered past. So picture this, a mayor who doesn't just fall from grace, but plunges into legal troubles. That's Jerry Genova, the former mayor of Calumet City, who ruled from 1993 to 2001 when he was indicted and eventually jailed for five years. His crimes? Pocketing $125,000 in kickbacks and shamelessly using city employees to campaign for him on the city's dime. That sounds familiar. Fast forward to Tiffany Hayard, whose political and financial dealings seem very similar to Genova's playbook. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves getting up at press conference, talking about nothing, learn the laws. Hanyard, who is knee deep in controversies of her own, is under scrutiny on how she handles or mishandles her campaign funds. Where is the money going? Tiffany's campaign finance reports are more mysterious than any detective show or novel. There's hardly a trace of payments for the political consulting she allegedly receives from Jerry Genova. And when it comes to other campaign related expenses, they're virtually non-existent in her financial disclosures. And what is baffling about Tiffany Hanger? Most of her declared expenses are for food. Yeah, food. While there should be finance reports covering campaign flyers, event organization, and other significant expenses, all we see is receipts for meals, food. There's also a small expenditure at a cell phone store and another tiny amount spent at the post office, which doesn't come close to covering most of the mailing campaign literature. And this is where whoever's running the accounting firm for Tiffany Hanger is doing some creative stuff here. Tiffany claims her campaign literature was paid by her campaign fund in a group called Residents for a Better Dalton. However, it turns out that this group doesn't even exist, confirmed by legal checks and a lawsuit involving another party. This raised some significant concerns about the transparency and honesty of her campaign financial dealings. There isn't any. So who's really paying? It appears that some of Tiffany's extravagant fundraising events in 2022 and 2023 were bankrolled not by her campaign, but by the Dorton Township. This misuse of funds is not only odd, but potentially illegal as campaign funds are required by law to cover such expenses. Like I said many times in this video, she is screwed, like totally effed up. Like she's going to jail. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, let's get into some of her state filings. Tiffany Hanger's filings are a complete hot mess. They are so irregular and incomplete that they should have already triggered audits and investigations. I'm talking to you, Attorney General. Her reports are missing crucial details about major donations and other significant expenditures, making it difficult to understand where the campaign funds are actually going. I have some theories. 
probably going into Tiffany Hanger's pocket. Check out this disappearing act right here. Tiffany endorsed and donated $5,000 to Gloria White, a candidate for a state representative. While White properly reported this contribution, Tiffany failed to declare it on her campaign financial statements, a clear violation of campaign finance law. That's why the feds are here. It's necessary for a thorough federal investigation. It's not just appropriate, it's essential. From shadowy financial reports to the complete absence of accountability, this unfolding story of Tiffany Hanger's campaign finance adventures offer a window into the world of political funding. It's corrupt as all hell. It serves as a reminder that the importance of transparency is necessary to maintain integrity in the public office. I guess my little rev review so far of what we've seen, it was Tiffany Hanger being completely cooked, getting just wiped down, washed out, First, by the public comments, I mean, they said everything that they want to say to her face, calling her dumb, she can't read, she can't speak, she can't, she can't write, has, the grammar is terrible, just completely destroyed her. I mean, I think the beginning was a good sign that she was just going to get cooked, right? Pay for your own makeup and your own stylist. Why would you think that the residents have to pay for that? You are so stupid. Surviving here, this administration is shameful. Y'all are a disgrace because you know what? Y'all getting RICO charges. Y'all getting RICO charges because y'all y'all have conspired to lie to the residents. You all have been stealing property. That property that's built on that corner, Mayor, you so silly. You didn't even have the nerve enough to bring it to the board, bring it to the citizens. You didn't even make sure that the town some of the residents got the jobs over there on that construction site. But you know why? Because you you getting you doing pay to play, baby. They paying you. That's why you're doing pay to play. The reason the business people didn't get their business license because they wouldn't pay to play with you. That is why. And the FBI know. They know everything you're doing. And baby, you better come with those receipts because if you don't, you probably played Kwame. Y'all played him. But the FBI sure enough gonna be knocking on your door at your house coming to get your ass at four o'clock in the morning. And I feel as a young black woman, you have told us time and time again that you have the receipts. And that's all this is really about, being transparent, being open, being honest. It has nothing to do with shaming a black woman in power, nor shaming the super mayor as you so infinitely call yourself, with a whole bunch of flyers and billboards. Yeah, the little heart was cute, but I really don't appreciate the way you played my son out of his money for the little dance cap that you also promised him that everyone else does not know about. It's not that we're stalking the black woman in power. It's just the wrong black woman, a black woman who does not know how to manage Finances, Mr. Delgado, unass that seat. You got a million point two between us and the township. You can go home and play with your checkbook or whatever you play with. But sitting up there, you need to go. You don't protect us. You don't represent us. You represent the mayor. First of all, it is misconduct. And if there's anything I can do about it, it's going to be done. You represent the mayor against the people's trustees. What kind of bullshit is that? And you call yourself our lawyer. You call yourself our lawyer. It tells me what you think of us, that you show up here. And the same thing with you, Keith. The nerve of you all to put your asses in front of us when you disrespect us the way you do. I would want to say this because you've always said, um, let me educate y'all. Let me educate y'all. You know, and... It's insulting. I mean, what are your credentials? Um, you don't have the wherewithal to educate a preschooler, and you're trying to educate us who have degrees and other things. I mean, it is insane. Please retire that phrase. It's egregious at this point. Let me educate y'all. Um, I just, I don't understand it. And then, you know, you're always saying, Fake news, fake news, they hating on me. Fake news, we're like, I mean, why would anyone just want to hate on the mayor? I mean, you have to give them a reason to want to hate you and you give, 
given everyone several. Um, you're not accountable. You don't respect people that have a different opinion or opinion that goes against yours. Um, you're not qualified at this point. You're not qualified for that seat you're, for various reasons. Um, we're not even gonna talk about like the grammar. I mean, that's embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing. Keith Freeman, let me not forget about you and that deer in headlight look you had um, on, on the news. And I hope you get everything that's coming to you. Um, Chief Lacey, you're bogus. I saw the whole live with Jedediah. He, you, you literally concocted a story and you went and you made a report based on your imagination, basically, because what you said did not happen. We, he was live and people were watching live. So like you, I don't know. I mean, it just, I can't understand why you would just so blatantly knowing your position, knowing the oath that you're sworn to disrespect a citizen for no reason, really. I mean, other than a personal reason, you didn't have a legal reason. It's just a matter of time. Time is ticking. People are waiting and people are going to celebrate. And I'm going to be right there. Then later on, no plants. I'll give it to her. No plants came into the meeting and said and embarrassed themselves. So I give her for not putting any plants. And I think she realized at this point it doesn't work. Clearly, the Keith Freeman was forced to sit next to her. They're trying to show that they still have it together. So they had Keith Freeman sit next to Tiffany, even though when you notice in the last couple of weeks, they've been very like, far apart. But they had to kind of show like they had some level of team, even though they don't. Next, we see Del Galdo still there. We'll see. I think he still represents her. She clearly can't pay him. He's leaving because the money is not there. So we'll see if he's still there the next meeting, but you know, probably, probably won't be. And, and it's funny, she called him the super lawyer. And Belcher completely challenged that and had her own view on who's going to super jail. And that's the thing that I know that people don't like to give credit when credit's due. You have won every case and you made sure the village, is, the village has been victorious throughout it all. And I just love you for sticking with us. So thank you so much for that. Because people don't want to give you your flowers and your credit when you do. And for those that don't know, he is called a super lawyer, just like your super mayor. How about He's that? going to super jail, just like the super mayor. <laughs> Then, obviously, hanging with her propaganda, the gaslighting, the deflection, talking about all the things that she's doing correctly, how it's the trustees' fault, like a lot the same level of deflection, a lot of that that dark arts of manipulation that she does so well. Well, you have to check your pipes and then uh, take a picture of it and send it back to the company. These are all things under my administration um, that we have done and secure for our community. Um, a lot of other positive things uh, that you got coming up is, again, unity amongst community. That's us rebuilding our community, telling people what's going on, telling the things that's um, open for them and different options. Next, we have the, the Dalton tax levy. You can play that one. So I want to dispel some of the lies and some of the rumors that you guys always get because you get a ton of rumor view. And that's why a lot of people come and listen to me because they don't hear the, the mess in the background. Um, a lot of people tell one side and narrative, but you guys never come and get the other side. A lot of times this board sells you off of fake news, which is they come out and they film things and they put our community in a bad light. At the end of the day, guys, I say this and I mean this. We have to still live here. When they leave, we have to fix what's broken. And you cannot up chaos, keep up mess, and bring it to your community and point the finger. I don't think it's three more not pointing back at you. So what I try to teach is I lead with love, and I try to educate the public on the things they don't know. It, thank you so much. On the things that they don't know, such as your taxes. Um, I know this last board meeting I see trustee has left because he said he did not vote to increase your property taxes. But yet the board put out that I raise your taxes. I don't even vote for taxes, but the board voted and raised your property taxes. But I want to show you this because at the end of the day, like I said, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. So I want to show you in black and white. And I always tell you, do your homework. You can foyer it. You can go check it out. You can get the ordinances. That way you'll see who is doing what instead of being misled. Because right now, guys, you have been hoodwinked. You've been bamboozled. You've been led astray. You've been all these things. And I'm trying to show you what it is that you're missing. Okay, guys, let us finish. Okay, so here we go, play the video so you can see that every single year this board, including Trustee Belcher, Trustee Norwood, Trustee Tammy Brown, Trustee Jason House.
raise your property taxes every year by 4.99%. And I've been telling y'all that since day one. And this is the evidence to show you that no matter what, they raise your taxes. No matter what they tell you, what lie they put out, they raise your property taxes. And this is me at one of my meetings. Once again, I have meetings. And I explained to them um, how the taxes got raised. What did they do? Who raised the property taxes? Because at the end of the day, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make it drink. That's what you understand. The next board meeting we had, which Boy. was January 26th. And when I say that the clerk um, all filed and all voted for the tax levy for $15 million, and you did not send that in. You sent in for $11 million and not the $15 million that the board voted for here. But this is what all we saw. It was myself, it was everybody here, but they only turned in the tax levy for $11 million, shorting us by $4 million. And this is what I'm talking about when they go do secret store meetings without the entire body and we don't know about it and we find out about it later. But the problem is it's not working as much. And, and I think, you know, Belcher just got tired of it. These are the problems. Fire you're out of order. You're you're out of order, order man. So why are you're we out of order. That? We shouldn't have to do that. The whole point of all of this is to build the community up, not tear each other down. That is the point of this. And it's sad because you guys ran on my ticket, both of y'all, Trustee yeah. Belcher and Trustee House. Both yeah. y'all did. And when you ran on my ticket, y'all ran on my vision. My vision is to fix our community. The so vision wasn't to rob the, the city. The vision wasn't for the FBI. The vision wasn't for you to steal all the money. So don't start talking about the vision. You know that is defamation. Don't start talking about the vision. Don't talk about the vision. Tell me what. Completely got tired of it. It it, it 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 was legendary. I mean, she just got tired of that nonsense. Completely. Nora would basically set her straight. When we talk about our financial state, it's sad. You know, the things that I could tell you would scare you as a resident in regards to the things that the people who are over the day-to-day -day operation, the decisions that they make, the, the fact that they do not prioritize this spending, and then they come up here and say, hey, vote for this, vote for that. I found it quite interesting that we have our mayor that just sat up here and said, oh, um, you want receipts for the taxes? I'll put it on Snapchat. I found that particularly interesting considering that we've been asking for financials for months. Put that on Snapchat for us, please. You, we have $4 million in checks 
that the board have approved that have not been dispersed. The checks are on someone's desk. Whose desk? We do not know. So when we are, when we continue to act for financials, when we make decisions, it's just responsible. You know, we were elected to do a job and that's what we're here to do. We keep saying, hey, this spending is getting out of control. We've been saying that for months. You have Trustee Belcher just set up here and asked, hey, if we're making decisions on voting for the bills, uh, could someone tell us about the $6.8 million grant? We didn't receive an answer. But yet, we're told that we're, the bag is being here. The bag is present, but the bag is empty, guys. It's empty. And we cannot forget Clark Key setting the mayor straight, making sure that everyone knows what exactly is going on without all of the nonsense. So now that you just heard all the fake news, when we talk <laughs> about fake news, um, I would like Attorney McGrath to talk to you about the true facts of the tax levy. Um, the clerk doesn't do anything unless it goes through the board and the legal department. I don't just sign names on paperwork until it has been completed fully. So Attorney McGrath, if you would like to go to the mic back there or you can come into my mic, whatever, and you can speak. Rinky dink, my uh, lawyer. Disrespectful. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, you are correct uh, as far as the tax levy. Uh, there is a proposed tax levy by the mayor. It was not moved forward by the mayor, the administrator, or uh, the board. It said out there there was no tax levy. If no tax levy is filed with the county, the county is set to miss out on, it was about $14 million. So the board called a, a proper special meeting, passed the tax levy in the proper amount, same as last year with no 4.9 increase. Um, and... Uh, there will be no increase in the tax uh, property bills as far as the villages portion of the tax property. She's not being honest. She is deflecting. She's doing, oh, you don't want the kids to swim. So that's why you say no to the swimming pool. Binary thinking with, with the super mayor. When it, you know that's not the reason why they're saying no to these things. They don't trust you. So that's what Belcher was saying at the end. We don't trust you to buy penny candy. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Is there a motion and second? Any discussion? Yes. Go ahead. We wouldn't trust you to buy penny candy. If you think we're about to let you buy properties. I could care less. You pick your vote, choose what you want. This is we, again. The village of Dalton is not in the real estate business. We're not buying no properties. Okay, then why y'all motion and second it then? Don't motion and second. That's we had a discussion because we want the people to know why we're not. Because you would get up here and lie and be like, they don't want to buy the properties and they don't want to spend no money. So we motion and second, like we can do in Robert's News order and discussion. The discussion is we don't trust you to buy penny candy. And no, we're not buying no property because the village of Dalton is not in the business of property. Y'all done already stole about 60 houses, so ain't nobody gonna deal with you buying no property. So that's the end of my discussion. I second that motion. So we're not going to trust you to buy property, whether you can do it or not. So, you know, then Hanier is like, you can do it if you understand. It's not about understanding why they don't trust you at all to do anything. Uh, I think the FBI is going to set her straight as well, but that's where the meeting was. It was Hanyard with her propaganda nonsense, with the terrible videos, old videos, recycled videos, recycled edited clips, and then it came to Bel no, Kirk Key, Trustee Belcher, Trustee Norwood, setting her straight, saying whatever you were saying was complete nonsense. And you could tell Belcher got under uh, Hanyard's skin. Tiffany Hanyard was yelling back with her. Like, yeah, Belcher was tired. She was pissed off. She's tired of dealing with this nonsense. But, you know, at one point you thought, okay, Hanger's keeping it cool. I mean, she's getting absolutely cooked. And I think that was probably why she went back to argue with Trustee Belcher. I think she was mad at all of the public comments, completely roasting her. Completely. You're not only you're you're incompetent, you're a thief, you're stupid. Like you're just dumb. You're embarrassing yourself. All these things. I mean, it was quite the spectacle. So I think at that at that end, she couldn't take it anymore. And obviously Belcher was just tired of her lying. And that's why they went back and forth. But that's that's really it. And then Noah we're talking about putting things on Snapchat. I'm gonna put this information on Snapchat. They want the financials, put it anywhere. Snapchat, email it, put it on a post. They want to know about the financials that they still are trying to hide.
where's the funds? There's no way she's going to quit. She's not going to resign. If that's what you guys are going to think is not going to happen. The only way that she's no longer the mayor or the supervisor for the township is she is arrested or voted out. Those are the only two. Only two. Keith had the audacity to show up. Well, it's a few things. He, he is in trouble for lying about bankruptcy. So he doesn't have great financials, clearly, because he's trying to find ways to hide income. So he probably needs to work to make the money. Can't just quit. And if he's working with the feds, he needs to stack as much paper up to do whatever he has. I know he has some kids. I, know he, I, I think he's married. So you got to work. I mean, there's no one's going to hire him to do anything getting six figures for all the stuff that he's doing now. So right now he has to work, keep collecting the checks because eventually he has to find another way to either support his family or pay for lawyers or whatever. So I think that's why he's kind of stuck. And also if he's working for the feds, maybe he finds a way he doesn't go to jail, um, but he still needs some money because he he did file for bankruptcy and then tried to hide the, the amount of money that he earned like a, like a dumbass. Do you think Del Goldo is working with the feds too? Who knows at this point? Maybe not. Maybe not. I, I don't think so. I think he may be, he should have some concerns because even as a lawyer, he can tell this is a corrupt situation. But Doug Aldo has previous history dealing with a lot of, I guess, a gray, gray area in terms of ethical things that other officials are doing. Does he think he's rolling with the feds? I don't know. I don't think so. But maybe he is. Who knows? No one knows what's happening. Who's working with whom? We all kind of assume Keith is because he got caught with something. He probably doesn't want to go to jail. So, okay, we want to get the big fish. The big fish is obviously Hanyard. So you're the second command. Tell us what you tell us what you know, and you won't go to federal prison where you have to spend about what 85% of your time. And at federal prison, they don't let you out early. So, you know, figure this out. Let us know what's going on. Or, you know, like what Stubb said, someone will be flying to visit you because you're not gonna, there's no, you know, you're not gonna be staying around in state for someone to could drive and, and say hi to you, right? Do I think Lightfoot did something, as again, a net positive? We're talking about Jedi. Was he a net positive despite the fact that, you know, he's a little bit of a, you know, he brings some chaos. I think the Lightfoot announcement sped something up. Now, some people say it's coincidence. Some people say it, it's actually her just being there. I think it was a net positive, especially right now. It looks like the Fed's going to jump in anyway. They may not even need to pay Lightfoot anything. But a lot of this stuff is... Is documented. It's the properties that they, they've bought, the weird properties that were sold or the boyfriend sold for twice as much. A lot of things that she was helping her friends and all of the people that, that she keeps close to her. Well, we're talking about Keith Freeman. You're talking about even Holmes, Moore, obviously, you know, Robert Hunt, the finance guy over the township, all have like multiple companies, all trying to get the kickbacks, all trying to find ways to profit from this, this community and that, and those, and that money isn't coming to the people, even though they're contributing that money with the financials, with taxes. And absolutely. There's so many things that she has said on camera that contradicts everything. And the reason why this story, this saga, you call it, it's, there's so many videos coming out and so many people, there are people out here that are able to break down board meetings from two years ago, because this woman has been a fool, a clown, for so many years, for so many hours, there's thousands, I would say thousands of hours of Hanyard on camera from the board meetings, from her own social media stuff that she puts together, all the hours that she's been a trustee. So that's why there's so much content and there's so much things that people can go back a year ago when she said this, but then uh, two years ago, she said something different. Or when she was a trustee, she didn't have, she, she was going after Mayor Riley and all the, all the things that he was doing wrong. And then she's, she took the wrong that she saw Mayor Riley do and then turned it up a thousand. And that's, that's where everyone is right now. That's why there's people outside, there's, there's protests, there's 20 something lawsuits that Del Galdo decided to abandon because he wasn't going to get paid. So he was like, he was out. The FBI look at these actions as a broader pattern of corruption or financial misconduct. It could be seen as part of a racketing activity. It could fall under RICO charges. We finally have the full subpoena for the Thornton Township, and it's quite a serious, serious one. Tiffany Hanyard is in so much trouble. There's no way Hanyard is getting out of this. So somebody going to jail. The feds are looking deep, and we're going to read the rest of this, but I want to talk about what it looks like is happening with Hanyard and her group of cronies. What kind of charges they're looking at? All right, so right here at Thornton Township, you're commanded to appear. 
in this United States District Court. We're going to check out all the things that they're going to have to uh, present to the federal authorities. So right off the bat, they're looking for absolutely everything. Kamal Woods, you are in trouble. You're going to have to deal with some things going on too. Looking for all background records, including applicants for employment, personnel files, credit checks, or background investigations for these people, all employment and payroll records, including records disclosing the dates of appointment, wages, and or commissions paid, direct deposit, election forms, ACH authorization forms, checks front to back used for any payments for the above name individuals. Everything, everything you guys are spending money on, you are totally screwed. Dates and time of the people who worked that day, records of the time and attendance, disciplinary files, uh, records of work performed, including assignments, positions, titles, responsibilities, contract, modifications, proposals, and dates of employment. Showing that did you actually show up to work or just collect a check? Kamal Woods that's making 100 k a year, looking for wage and tax statements, employees withholding allowance certificates, U.S. information returns, so a lot of information. They're going really, really deep here. Let's see what else they're looking for in this. So we're going to move ourselves down. So right here, all municipal code and ordinances applicable during the given time period related to credit card purchases, all the stupid things that she spent the money on, vendor approvals, only approved by Hanyard herself. Hanyard billed thousands of dollars in hotel rooms and meals during the trip to Thornton Township and Dalton credit cards. In addition, the video show Hanyard used multiple village and township vehicles owned by taxpayers to escort the caravan. She did so many things where people didn't get paid or there was some mismanagement of funds. The board didn't know. She spent a lot of money on her own. So we'll see exactly what happened here. Uh, they got the procurement. They have employment contract terminations. There are many employees suing the, the super mayor in the township for what they, were, what they went through. Sandra Tracy is one of them. So we'll see exactly who got terminated and why per diem expense reimbursements outside employment to include any specific regulations for the police department loans, work schedules, employee contractor travel, security detail. This is a really big one right here because she thinks she's some sort of president of a small island somewhere or some small country where she runs everything. Dalton trustee Brittany Norwood says Henyard began assembling her details shortly after being elected in 2021 using hand-picked Dalton police officers. Using a freedom of information request, we obtained the work records for six of the officers assigned to Henyard's security detail at various times and showed them to some of Dalton's trustees. This is a freedom of information request we did to see how much overtime these officers are making on her security details. Oh, wow. 162 hours. 162. Well, that's nothing. What goes through your mind when you see these numbers? Um, uh, it, it's, it's disappointing. It's frustrating. The officers are paid every two weeks, which without overtime is 80 hours. But when they're put on Henyard's detail, that 80 hours balloons to well over 100 hours, sometimes 200 hours. And in the case of Officer Terry Young last May, 303 hours worked over a two-week period. That resulted in a single paycheck of more than $13,000. How? How does a person put in a two-week pay period, 303 hours? That's impossible. So we're going to see that use of vehicles. Clearly, you see... These guys drive around in nice, expensive, high interest rate vehicles. So they're going to be going through that as well. There's another one right here. Residency requirements for employees or contractors. So another thing that we noticed, Mayor Hanyard had employees that did not follow these residency requirements, that they were working for places, but didn't even live at the places that they're working for. All budgets created for the entity, accounting records for all revenue, expenses, assets, liabilities, and equity related entries for the entity. This should include all user data, access, logs created with any accounting software used, all applications, payment receipts, contracts, and or agreements related to loans procured on the behalf of the entity. She is so screwed. Even if they tried to even manipulate this information, she is 100% screwed. But let's continue. Let's keep reading this subpoena. All records of payments to employees, including payroll, reimbursements, disbursements, Direct deposit information, they're looking for all the records outside of employment for employees and contractors are maintained. And they want to go, let's see the employee handbook if there is one. Even all the board meetings, they want the agendas, they want the minutes, they want the warrants list presented, they want every single thing. So 
So if you guys have been watching a lot of these board meetings, not necessarily the, the, the Dalton ones, but there are ones for Dalton Township. There was a meeting that only lasts four minutes a couple of weeks ago. They're going to want to know what's going on with that as well. All documents related to vehicle purchases and lease, not to include, but limited to the contracts, payments, approvals, authorized users, and authorized use for vehicles. She is so screwed because a lot of things that she was doing was not following the rules, wasn't following ethical or legal standards for the way she was moving and operating. This is where she's really going to get in some trouble. Any records for municipal resources used on behalf of a political entity, including but not limited to Friends of Tiffany Hanyard, charitable organizations. You guys know about that charitable organization that she pretends that she doesn't know anything about, that she's just a face? Henyer did something that would seemingly generate some good publicity, helping establish the Tiffany Henyer Cares Foundation to help breast cancer patients. And on the very day the charity was chartered, it received a huge donation, $10,000, from the Thornton Township Board, which Henyard presides over. Taxpayer money shouldn't be paid into those types of things. Charitable organizations, including, but not limited to, Tiffany Cares Foundation, Tiffany A. Hanyard Cares Foundation, and our Tiffany Hanyard Cares Foundation. All records maintain controls are in the possession of the township regarding Tiffany Cares Foundation, Tiffany A. here, just repeating the same, a couple of names. This should include all records related to a 2022 contribution of $10,000 for the Thornton Township. I'm sure you guys remember that really bogus charity that just seemed like another scam that she was operating in, doing really nothing for, to help anyone with cancer. Let's continue. They want all employee contractor records associated with the following individuals, including but not limited to hiring, retention, consulting agreements, or employment contracts, personnel files, work schedules, work of invoices and payments, and job descriptions for Keith Freeman, Keith Freeman LLC, Government Staffers LLC. They want everything. You see right here, they got Hanier, they got Finia Dukes, Carmen, Gerald Jones, Stan Brown, Kamal Woods, Cheryl Shanez. And then you got another right here. Please provide all records related to the below listed entities. Jose, this one was printing all those stupid pamphlets and all those brochures that had Tiffany big face on them, paying them a lot of money to do all this stuff. Paul Graver, first government leasing. We talked about this in the last video with Keith Freeman, where this company just jacks up the interest rates to communities that can barely afford it and exploits them. Keith Freeman got paid over $20,000 in consulting fees for first government leasing. So Keith Freeman is definitely screwed just like Henyard is. And they want to talk about the contracts, agreements, engagement letters, invoices, description of work, payments related to the following entities of the Dugaldo blog group. Maybe that's the reason why Michael Dugaldo decided, yeah, you guys are not even going to be insurable and also you're not paying and I don't want to go to jail too. Remember the super mayor talking about the super lawyer. I love the fact that you have been with us since day one and you have never ever gave up on us. I like the fact that you have run every case against that dude right there that's been trying to take our money. Um, so I appreciate that. And that's the thing that I know that people don't like to give credit when credit's due. You have won every case and you made sure the village, is, the village has been victorious throughout it all. And I just love you for sticking with us. So thank you so much for that. Because people don't want to give you your flowers and your credit when you do. And for those that don't know, he is called a super lawyer. Just like your super mayor. How about He's that? going to super jail, just like the super mayor. He's there as well. Another another interesting name, Jerome Geneva, which I thought it was Jerry, but Jerry Jerome, probably the same person. He has a past, and we talked about this in a previous video with Tiffany A. Hanyard being consulted for her, even though he's pretty shady as well. So everything that we've all talked about, all the videos, all of the township meetings, everything they have done, the FBI is looking into. And they want the records of those trips right here. All records related, approved, non-approved travel for the paid by the township. This include official purpose for travel, hotel, airfare, per diem requests, approvals, per diem disbursements, credit card purchases or credit card expenses, expensive reports, receipts, expense disbursements. And we found Dalton credit card statements showing that Henyer takes the detail with her even when she travels out of town, spending thousands of dollars on plane tickets, lodging, and meals for the officers. Mayor, why are you taking all the officers out of town with you? Isn't that a waste of taxpayers' money? Any board of trustee approval denial for travel, this response should include, but not limited to the following of the big trips that we all talked about the bike ride to Springfield, a trip to DC, and obviously the infamous trip 
to Vegas where we have a trustee by the name of Andrew Holmes accused of sexual assault and Tiffany Hanyard accused of burying the accusations, burying the story, firing the employee by the name of Miss Dukes and demoting the police officer who came up to talk about what he heard and what happened. So we, we know that they have some issues with that as well. And the FBI wants all of the internal and external electronic communications related all requests listed above. This communication should include, but not limited to the following parties. And we all know the big swingers right here. We see the Hanyard, we see Keith Freeman, Robert Hunt, Kamal Woods, all the really, really corrupt individuals. They want everything from obviously whatever Tiffany Hanyard was doing. Good Burgers, that's another failed company. Aisha Properties, Friends of Tiffany Hanyard and the Tiffany Hanyard, and the Tiffany Hanyard Cares Foundation. So what does this all mean? The situation surrounding Tiffany Hanyard and Keith Freeman primarily involves allegations of mismanagement and possible misuse of public funds that basically could expose them to RICO charges, Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. If their actions could be found a part of an ongoing criminal organization or enterprise, that's what they'll be falling under, RICO charges. And it's not just being dramatic. If you checked out this channel and been on top of this story, as long as I have, you'll realize there's been a lot of misuse of public funds. There's allegations against Hanger and Freeman of misappropriating taxpayer dollars. The FBI look at these actions as a brought up pattern of corruption or financial misconduct. It could be seen as part of a racketing activity. It could fall under RICO charges. Both Hanyard and Freeman hold significant administrative positions in the village of Dalton in the Torrington Township accusations that Freeman has mismanaged roles or responsibilities with actions like an unapproved withdrawals and transactions suggest misuse of office, which can fall under the pattern of RICO. All the major players in Hanyard's group all have conflict of interest, all have multiple positions, all use their positions of power to take as much of the taxpayer's money as possible. That's the pattern that we've seen over the last couple of months covering this story. They all seem like they're just deep in corruption. Taking a look at Freeman's alleged actions, like making bank account withdrawals and transactions without the proper authorizations in his role as contracting the, without board consent, potentially outline a scheme to defraud, which is a RICO charge. So all of these issues form a pattern that under investigation, if it's proven that there was a pattern of behavior designed to enrich themselves or maintain control over the government entity through illegal means, that means it falls under RICO charges. The statutes of RICO for running an illegal enterprise. This could lead to serious legal repercussions if these former charges are pursued and proven. So yeah, she's kind of screwed. This is just is terrible. They're looking for absolutely everything Everything that we've talked about, all the accusations, all the, the stupid things we've seen Hainer and her group have been doing for the last couple of years, the FBI wants it all. They want the entire story, and they have a few days until they get the entire story. Y'all done now, y'all done with the grandstanding. Are y'all done with the grandstanding? All this is grandstanding, all this is playing, plotted. Don't y'all see the political play right here? To stop our ability to get to the facts. All right, we will continue to work on this who you talking to, Tom? No, 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 board meeting breaking down the highlights or you can consider the lowlights of this meeting and as always want to check out what the people are saying they're frustrated and they're ready to speak and of course before the meeting begins mind you it's late chief lacy has something to say ladies and gentlemen you're gonna have to calm down and if you do not calm down i'm going to clear the whole room and lacy continued to threaten to clear the room yet 
never ever clearing the room until the very end. We'll talk about that a little later. One more disruption. I am clearing the room. Quiet. Otherwise, we are going to clear the room. Okay. One more word. We're going to clear the room. I'm clearing the room. Saying, One more time. I'm clearing the room. Point of wasting my time. If you don't calm down, I'm going to clear the room. Okay. Last time, I'm gonna say it. Clear the room. Let's see what they had to say about this ongoing saga. And Andrew, oh my God. You look horrible. This has to stop. This has to stop. We got a clean house. We got to vote all of them out. All of them out. Stan Brown, Andrew Holmes don't say nothing. Nothing. Y'all sit up there quiet. What do they have on you? Y'all don't have no freedom to speak? This is for the mayor. Per our last conversation at Dunkin' Donuts, you asked me, could you talk to me? I allowed you to talk to me. And Madam Clerk, I want it on record today that Tiffany Henyard can never ever, as long as she stay black, approach me and ask, can she talk to me because all she do is lie. It's looking a little light up there with all the department heads is that little financial lady she didn't ran. And there's a big difference in being raised and being brought up. And if you were raised correctly, you wouldn't speak to your elders, your colleagues, your fellow administration, the way that you and, uh, Mr. Stan riding a bike, you're going to ride it all the way to the federal penitentiary with this woman. Only one person gets a working microphone, really a golden microphone. How much narcissism can you stand? Jeez. And if the shoe fits, lip into the red bottom slippers and prance off into the sunset. You double down on wrongness. And I don't understand that. I'd also like to welcome, uh, a certain trustee we haven't seen in a few months, few weeks actually, because of uh, various escapades in Las Vegas. Another really big surprise was the emergence of trustee Andrew Holmes. I haven't seen this man in a meeting in months. I wonder if he was forced to show up. He doesn't look great. He looks really gaunt, but he actually showed up this time to do his job. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Let's see what Andrew Holmes said. He hasn't been in his meeting in months, right? He's been gone. Let's do a little recap of everything he was doing at this meeting. Trustee Holmes. Present. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Holmes. So the man said little to nothing the entire time. What's the point of him even still being there? I don't see it. He's not involving himself in discussions. Why is he still the trustee? Can someone else jump in? I don't know. Before we get into probably the most dramatic part of the meeting, let's discuss how things were before Lightfoot got up to speak. And of course, we have the mayor talking for minutes on end without a break, saying the same old stuff. And mind you, she had that really nice golden mic telling us people, telling us journalism's what's what. We're getting $1 million. I don't know if you heard about that. Of course not, because news didn't display that. That will be here by June 30th. It's for $1 million for operating expenses. Again, these are things that we do here, meaning myself and my administration, but it don't get no type of play. And that's $1 million. Also, D. CEO grant, another one for $112,000 is for capital improvements. That's for projects, things that you would like to do. So sometimes when you see us developing or doing things in our community, we have grant money to do it, but no one educates the public on the how. You guys just see it being produced and don't understand how we're doing it. Y'all using me for clickbait and ratings. Um, I wish you guys will come out for the good we do in our community. It's time of the events that I post, um, that I advocate for, and that I showcase. Because um, y'all literally go on my Facebook page, my Instagram page, uh, my Tiffany on the Move podcast page, and you take my clips and use it to bring people into your stations. Um, I think now you guys owe me a check, news, uh, because you use my likeness and my name just for views. Um, please, please um, showcase the good in our village because you're putting a black eye on our community. People put out their narratives, and yes, we're going to entertain a lot of it as it relates to the facts because you guys are following fiction, a made-up story. It is a smear campaign going on right now. People are using different people for political gain, and it's sad. And to be completely honest, things were pretty chill until discussion about money came up. Items, uh, I actually contacted the village administrator today and thank you so much, Keith Freeman, for responding back to me. Um, but the Moscow designs that's on there, 
um, for $65,000 was brought up before. And um, Tanjanique Miller has stated that it was paid for already. So I'm kind of confused because we still cannot get back in my viewpoint, but just trying to find out if um, she said on record it was paid for, why is it still coming back up on the warrant list? Um, I don't have that exact information for you right now, but I'll get it. If you send it to me in email, I'll respond to you. Okay. Um, I just feel that we go through this every month and with everything going on, the it comes to the part where we get to finances and the finance people, not even here to never answer the questions. Um, the village administrator did read off some numbers earlier, but it would be great if we had it in writing. We've been asking for financial records since September, and here it is that um, it's June, and we still don't have it. We, is it a reason why you guys keep taking out the pool? Yes, it's, oh. Oh, you got it, trust me. No, my question is, um, can you provide that we have insurance over there for that pool? I'm asking, can you guys <laughs> please fix the pool? You guys know the answer to all of this. Melly's uh, been there forever, but it's just sitting there. We pay for it anyway. I'm asking, can we please fix the pool? Are you guys willing to put it back into the bills list so we can fix the pool so we can utilize it this summer? Can you answer my question? Do you have insurance over there? We have insurance throughout the entire village, so that's a redundant question. No, it so wasn't. Do we have insurance for the pool at Melanie's Pillman Center? To put it back into the bills list. There's two, there are two vendors, um, which kind of goes to the point. Um, MBD Solutions, which is a concrete vendor that replaces concrete in the village of Dalton, has emailed multiple times. They were approved by the board more than seven months ago and have yet to receive payment. Can somebody advise on the status of their payment? As you just stated, finance is not here. So why would we have that right here in front of us? Another. All right, right. Okay. quiet. Order. All As right. you guys know, a mayor does not handle the finances. So stop. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm telling you the answer, that's the answer. So if I don't handle finances, it has to go to the finance director or the finance department. And they know that. But we sit here and we grandstand every board meeting for you guys. Everybody know the steps. They know how all this goes to make it like somebody doing something. Finance not here. And they could have got every single question answered before we got here and put on this show for you guys to point fingers. Because guess what? It's election time. So here we go. But I'm done talking because I know y'all use me for clickbait. Whatever else you got. So one of the major points of this meeting is about Lori Lightfoot. Hanger shut down the investigation last month. So basically at the end of the meeting, the main event happens when they officially override the veto about Lori Lightfoot. But right before this vote actually comes in, Stan Brown finally speaks up. And it looks like this man has been living under a rock. He had a lot of very pressing questions. I guess the man didn't use Google or talk to the mayor, or he is just pretending he has no idea what is going on. Okay, um, as I hear, we have a investigation going on by the FBI <laughs> at this time over the village. Is that what's going on right now? Yeah. Okay, you are the hey, please, quiet, quiet. Everybody listen to y'all, quiet. So we got an uh, investigation over the village as a whole, um, all the employees or just elected officials? Uh, whatever they put in a subpoena. Just, just, just trying to get some clarity on this here. <laughs> all right. All right, quiet. Quiet. Well, what we had on this? Yeah. Um, I would assume it's the, the, the it's oh. tied to the subpoena. Or are we just yeah. talking about this is investigation on the mayor or the village? Oh, you're saying the, what we're looking over at. Um, the investigation. Last time, quiet. The investigation is on allegations of, uh, it was stated previously that there was an investigation done into what, what happened in Vegas, basically. So that investigation has not been shared with the board, and the board has made several inquiries. So that's one part of it. Also, the allegations or suspicion of commingling of funds or misuse of funds was another component of the request for this investigation. All right, last time, ma'am. You, you gotta go. <laughs> okay, guys. Guys, y'all have to stay 
keep order. We have to keep order. We can't keep doing it. We're trying to get down with our meeting. All right, you can call anybody else. Okay, call the roll, please. Of the veto. Override the of the veto. Over. Call the roll. Okay, Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan. Aye. Guys, you are out of I, order. I, I speak over the people. Why? Okay, call the roll. Trustee so, Stan Brown. So He's Stan still, Brown. Stan is still oh, in discussion. Go ahead, Stan, because you're in discussion. We're, so we're looking at paying you're not the mayor. $400 an hour for this investigation. Would the FBI already doing it? Yes. Okay, guys. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Please. You got to have order. You good? Okay. Go ahead, trustee. What you got? Stand. That's it. Stay. That's it. Okay. Call the roll, clerk. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. No. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed to override right. Mayor Steele. Next on the agenda is uh, is there a motion? Is there a motion to adjourn? Um, I make a mo I have a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Aye. Do you have a motion to adjourn? No, a motion to suspend the rules. Guys, we're done with the meeting. All the grandstanding can stop. It's over with. So that's it. And I okay, let's go. To adjourn. It has been motion. Is there a second? It it wasn't a motion to adjourn, Mayor. Trustee. Oh, trustee, did you? Trustee Holmes, did you adjourn the meeting? Okay, he, he adjourned. Is there a second? Is there a second? To adjourn the meeting. So, so I have a question because the. Okay, guys. Can we because the attorney, attorney the ain't said nothing. Guys, you are out of order. Let her speak. Guys, let her speak. Okay, nobody gonna speak. We gonna clear the let room. Let her speak. Minute. We're gonna clear the room. Let her room. speak. God. Let her speak. Hello. Nobody's going to be heard if you keep talking. Don't we got a motion on the table? Yes. Is the attorney, excuse me, attorney, do we got a motion on the table for the, for the record? I just want to know. With all due respect, uh, Lisa, you do not have the floor. <laughs> we are adjourning our meeting so we can go. So yes. if you have something to say, he could have wrote it, he could have wrote it and did all that. This is all grandstanding. And this is where things get extremely chaotic, out of control. I think the residents wanted Lori Lightfoot to speak. Hanyard obviously did not want that to happen. And you better not judge me. I didn't, I'm not going to jail. Quiet, quiet. Now let me go ahead. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go ahead with me. Go ahead, Trustee. I said, look, look, jump it off. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stan Brown. No. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed to override Mayor Smith. Yes! Yes!
Mics off. Uh, yeah. We will right. continue working okay. on behalf of the residents yes. of Dalton, and we will give you the facts that you deserve. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. People started to go crazy. You're seeing some near fights going on. People are getting a little bit too emotional. Then Lacey was able to fulfill his dream and help clear the room. No, 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 So what are my final thoughts about this meeting? Other than the little scene at the end, things kind of went a little better than usual. Things were a bit calm. They had some back and forths about money, obviously. And with Lightfoot being there, Haney had already knew that they were going to override this. I know there's a lot of back and forth. And even in the comments, every time I talk about Lightfoot, there's a back and forth about her effectiveness. The fact is, can she actually do anything? She doesn't have any power because she used to be a federal prosecutor, but she's no longer a prosecutor. One thing I did notice is the moment she was appointed, things started to rattle in the Hanyard administration. So is the effectiveness purely political? It's possible, but definitely something that bothers the Hanyard team. After the last couple of meetings, this was a bit tame in comparison. I'll be honest, a little tame, nothing too crazy, except at the end there, but it looks like no one got arrested. 
It just got a little emotional. Everything seems to be okay sitting there as well. The acting police chief of Dalton has been charged with bankruptcy fraud. Lewis Lacey is accused of filing misleading statements in his 2019 bankruptcy case. He's actually the second top aide to Henyard to face federal bankruptcy fraud charges in recent months. Everything is falling apart for the super mayor Tiffany Henyard, one of her last loyal people. Lewis Lacey has been charged in federal court for bankruptcy fraud. Why is all of her A1s lying to the feds about bankruptcy? Let's check this out. This actually just, I just saw this a few minutes ago. So we're going to kind of look through it ourselves here, but not great, not great at all. On a Monday, a police officer for the village of Dalton, Illinois was indicted today by a federal grand jury in Chicago on bankruptcy fraud charges for allegedly engaging in a scheme to conceal assets and income from creditors and prevent payment of a settlement of a lawsuit. This was a nine count indictment. Lewis A. Lacey, 61 years old with bankruptcy fraud, making false statements, perjury, lying, lying, lying. Each count is punishable by a maximum sentence of five years in federal prison. Damn, not good. This has nothing to do with anything, but the inspector general of the U.S. Small Business Administration, his name is Hannibal Ware. Hopefully he's a, hopefully he's a good dude. According to the indictment, Lacey, since the 1980s, has filed numerous personal bankruptcy cases in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the Northern District of Illinois, including petitions in 2019 and 2020. The recent petitions automatically stayed enforcement of a settlement agreement Lacey had reached in 2017 with a plaintiff in a lawsuit in state court. The indictment alleged that Lacey filed the 2019 bankruptcy petition after the plaintiff moved to enforce the settlement agreement, accusing Lacey of still owing $43,000 of the $55,000 settlement. This dude was making six-figure settlements. He was making more money on overtime than he was at his regular job. He couldn't pay it? What, what was he doing with his money? We thought it also important for you to know that acting chief Lacey has accumulated over time. It's our understanding that he is not part of the collective bargaining unit and has not been uh, for some time, which under normal circumstances would mean that he is not entitled to overtime. But as you can see here, for FY22, FY23, and FY24, and in, we're now in fiscal year 2025, through those four years, he's accumulated $215,747,000 just in overtime. Then also the indictment alleged that he's a big liar. He's made several material false and fraudulent representations in oral statements and documents submitted in the bankruptcy cases, including underreporting his monthly income. You know, that six figures he was making all that overtime, walking around with guarding the super mayor all over the place, just lying about how much money he was making and concealing bank accounts that he controlled. He also lied to say he was separated from his spouse and then she did not reside with him or contribute to his monthly income and mortgage, the indictment states. This dude lied about everything. These lies allow Lacey to fraudulently calculate his monthly income for purposes of repayment of his creditors as substantially less than it should have been if his spouse contributions were included, the indictment states. And oh yeah, he's been fired. He doesn't work as a cop anymore. There was a deputy chief that was placed on administrative leave. He disregarded that and showed up the very next day. He then received a notice that he was terminated. Uh, and he... he <laughs> Despite being notified that he was terminated and in discussions with the, uh, the Fraternal Order of Police, the FOP, uh, he again showed up today. Uh, once again, the mayor has changed the locks at the Village Hall. You all, you all, everyone recall how orderly and how nice it was to walk into the Village Board meeting on Monday night when the uh, uh, Madam Clerk and the trustees had uh, key fobs to get into the Village. Uh, once again, this is about the third time that she has changed the locks, so the elected officials uh, do not have access and cannot get into uh, the, the village hall, uh, which belongs to the people. I got a call from an attorney this afternoon who unfortunately says I have a couple lawsuits that I have to file against the village. Tough break for Lewis Lacey. So 
Who else is snitching? Who else is going to be start snitching now? The feds got him too. If Hanyard had a group of supporters that actually did not lie about their bankruptcy filings, maybe she still would have some power. But things are looking really, really bad for the super mayor. So let's recap here. This is a bombshell that reveals some serious problems in the leadership and the oversight within this village. Lacey has been hit with nine federal charges, including bankruptcy fraud, making false statements, and perjury. This guy is supposed to be upholding the law, and he's just manipulating the system for personal gain. Lacey's alleged crimes involve years of lying, deceit, hiding assets, lying about his income to avoid paying a settlement from a lawsuit, which he should have been able to afford because he made so much money in overtime. This was a calculated scheme to dodge financial responsibilities while collecting a hefty paycheck from the very community that he was supposed to serve. How does someone like that stay in uniform? Well, it doesn't because he's been fired. But this is when Hanyer comes in. She's the one ultimately responsible for ensuring that her administration, including the police force, operates with integrity. Yet, she doesn't operate with much integrity. Under her leadership, Dalton has been increasingly stuck in controversy. This latest, this latest situation with Lacey only adds to the growing list of issues that suggest a deep-seated problem with how the village is being run. Seriously, Lacey's case is a system of a larger issue. This indictment is going to continue to prompt even a broader investigation in how Dalton is being run under the Tiffany Hayden administration. Now, at this point, the feds got Lacey by the balls just like they have the balls of Keith Freeman. Hanger is in a lot of trouble because we all know that the feds are going to give Lucy some because we all know that Lacey doesn't want to go to jail for several years in a federal prison being a former police officer. He is going to start snitching. He is going to snitch. Hanger is in trouble. This seems like it's going to go in a bad way for her in the next couple of months. Her most loyal supporters, the ones who know all of the nonsense, all the illegal, unethical practices that Hanyard has been pushing, they all now have to go and save their own asses. There is no more loyalty. It's either you start talking or you're going to go to federal prison. And you don't get out that early when you get stuck in federal prison. This is significant. Obviously, we're going to continue to follow this story, but this does not look good at all for Hanyard. She must feel nervous with what is going on today. And I don't think those two lawyers that she picked up are going to do much good. I mean, based on those reviews, it seems like they're pretty bad. But we will no longer hear Lacey threatening to clear the room anymore. One more disruption. I am clearing the room. Thank you. Quiet. Otherwise, we are going to clear the room. Okay? One more word. We're going to clear the room. I'm clearing the room. Saying, One more time. I'm clearing the room. Of wasting my time. If you don't calm down, I'm going to clear the room. Okay, last time I'm going to say it. On the national platform, you said you didn't know anything about a foundation. But you forget that I was in certain rooms when certain things happened. And the reason I don't support you is because you were not honest about that foundation. I was in the room when it started. But well, right now, we can on these. If you want to have a little cat fight, hold on, hold on. You out of order. If you want to have a little cat fight, you can have this, that there. Right now, that's how we're business, the agenda. The super mayor, Tiffany Hanger, did not want to have that special meeting yesterday, but she did. And then she finally got exposed by trustee Carlisle for that Hanyard Cares Foundation, that charity that has been under a lot of scrutiny. Many people think it's a scam and trustee Carlisle had a lot to say about that. Let's get into it. So this was just your usual Thornton Township meeting. A lot of back and forths between the trustees and the super mayor and the supervisor, Tiffany Hanyard. There was a lot of discussions regarding the payment of bills and financial transparency. Several trustees expressed concerns over the process of approving payments without efficient documentation or information, which led to a lot of debates over the necessity and receiving invoices before making financial decisions. Trustee Jones, Carlisle, and Gonzalez highlighted the importance of having clear communication and documentation to avoid any misunderstandings or financial discrepancies. But like I said, Tiffany Hanger did not want this special meeting. She thought it was a waste of time. And during the meeting, she does her usual stuff, being extremely defensive. The supervisor frequently adopted a defensive tone when responding to questions or any kind of criticism, especially regarding the township's financial management and transparency. She was determined to defend her administration's actions and decisions, often pushing back against any accusation or any concerns raised by trustees. And this defensiveness was clearly apparent in her assistance that the township's processes were followed correctly. And any issues is not 
her fault. It's not her administration's fault. It's everyone else's fault. Hayner was extremely frustrated as well during this meeting, particularly when any discussions became repetitive or focused on issues that she believed have already been resolved and issues that she didn't want to talk about. She seemed annoyed at the board for rehashing matters she felt was unnecessary and unimportant, which added to the tension during the meeting. The biggest highlight of this meeting was talking about the Tiffany Cares Foundation. If you're not familiar with that, here's a little bit of information all about it. There's a foundation that's not registered, but it has nothing to do with you. Correct. That's true. Okay. That's so you're true. not aware of any of the work that they've done, money that they've raised, anything along those lines? Correct. I want to say thank you guys for having us today and letting us um, speak before you. Um, I want to say good afternoon and thank you to Chairman uh, Zadalinski. Did I get it right? <laughs> and Vice Chair uh, Tyvert and Republican spokesperson um, Red. Right. It's Reich. Reich. And the committee members. I want to thank you for just um, listening to us. Uh, before I begin my uh, one page speech. I want to let you guys know that we did just come back from an 11 day hike to Springfield. We started in Dalton and we walked and we rode bikes all the way to Springfield just to create this bill um, that you see before you. Um, I'm asking for your support. Meanwhile, WGN Investigates has learned nearly all of the money a South Suburban politician's cancer charity claims to have received in its first few months of activity came from taxpayers. The Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation was created in the fall of 2022 and heavily promoted by Henyard. The township board she oversees gave the foundation $10,000 days after its creation. A new filing with the Illinois Attorney General says the foundation only raised 3,000 additional dollars. Thousands more dollars were charged to township credit cards during the charity's walk to Springfield. The Attorney General has ordered the foundation to stop soliciting money because it still hasn't submitted tax filings to show how it's spent money. Why are there so much issue with the foundation? Well, the first thing, it's, it seems like it's a lot of misuse in public resources, public employees and resources for personal or foundational related activities, especially when it's funded by taxpayers is unethical and illegal. $10,000 coming from a township going into a, a, her CARES Foundation. This is a charity that shouldn't be there. I have no idea what's going on. Remember, she told that to Roland. She told that to Andrew Lee. I'm just a face or I don't know. People just put things in my name and I just run with it. Like none of that made any sense. And we can, we can back that up with a lot of information. This poorly worded message saying I, you know, I will be testifying before the revenue committee, a, a bill I created. She can't sign a bill, so she doesn't know what she's talking about. She changed, she has a you know, good burger business. She changed the name of the Facebook to go to Tiffany Harris Foundation. So let's listen to her testifying from this committee talking about this, the foundation. In September of this year, I founded the Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation, a non-for-profit organization whose mission is to find meaningful relief for people dealing with all types of cancer. Our goal is to provide resources and services for cancer patients as they fight for their lives. Whether it's wigs, prosthetics, or treatments, reduction of prescription drugs for options, support groups, or utility assistance. That is our focus. The Cancer Foundation supports the friend, everyone. The legislation supports our efforts. I am here before you as a representative of the people of Dalton and Township. Okay, so this is the back and forth between Trustee Carlisle and Tiffany Hanger. Carlisle expressed concerns as the usual stuff, township financial procedures, particularly with the lack of transparency and the difficulty in obtaining necessary financial documentation. The supervisor responds being defensive, stating that the town's financial processes are being followed properly and she denies any deliberate withholding information and suggests that any delays in communication were not intentional. She gets more and more frustrated with on the ongoing questioning of the township's processes. Even though she's running the entire show, she's the head of the administration, she's going to have to take these kind of questions and these kind of concerns. But here where the conversation gets more heated. If you, I know that I know that um, you're not able to always send things without approval from administration. So I know sometimes you've been advised uh, just because I emailed you about something else and you sent it to me prior to the question to my answer. And he was supposed to therefore um, email to me and I never got the response to that question. So again, uh, we can't get information directly from the finance department because he could have been directed not to provide us with information directly. Um, and I have an email. So let me make that clear. Okay. At the last meeting, I told you guys that uh, KP. 
So if you guys have questions for someone or want to sit down with anybody, that is your go-to person. What's any different when it was too free? It's no different. So if you guys have questions, please talk to Keith first. Again, first class, any questions that you have. Finance director. So we can't answer finance. Uh, we have a finance director today. If I ask finance questions, that should come from the finance director. Trust me. Not Keith Price. You should forge your questions for Keith Price. Right. You got a question for him, then he will get back to it. Hold on, hold on. I'm telling you, Harry. You go like this, Amy. Amy. So if you uh, got a question with him, brother, everybody, I'd like to ask you a quick shout out to Keith if you have a question, reach out to the key front. I don't know how many times I got to say that. Don't come to a meeting and act like no one's giving you anything. When again, you have made 12 to 15 emails, right? And then show up to not one with staff. Now let's be first clear on that. With Robert Hunt, you made meetings with. With Key Price, you made meetings with. And every department here in here, and you didn't show up to not one. So stop telling lies. Please. And the question is. You walk around as if you don't do anything, you don't make any decisions. Um, and the first time I ever really questioned supporting this is when you went on this national platform and you said you didn't know anything about a foundation. But you forget that I was in certain rooms when certain things happened. And, you know, again, I always try to be tactful because, again, I don't I don't like going back and forth. I don't like being considered attention. I don't like all this. But I don't like to feel like I'm being, being lied on. I don't like to feel like, um, you know, we're not telling the truth. And the reason I don't support you is because you were not honest about that foundation. I was in the room when it started. And then you came to my house after that unannounced. And try to get me to say somebody else already got foundation that did it. And so, Ooh, again, all right. Again, and I'm so Okay. Again, so you're trying to say anything right, about me not supporting for somebody yeah, else. I don't put it out there. Of you. I don't support you because, again, you act like you don't make decisions. You make every decision. You know, and maybe you didn't execute it, but I was there. I was your assistant for two years. And I was there for two years. You know, and maybe you didn't execute it, but I was there. I was your assistant for two years. So you sit up here week after week. You sit up here month after month and pretend it. Like, and I've been kind to you. I've been patient. And I'm going to continue to be that way. You know, but you know, you didn't get up here and say, I'm not supporting you for any other reason because of you. It's wrong because I don't support you because of you. Not for Keith Freeman, not for anybody else. I don't support you because you, you're not on. 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 you are not on 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 you are not but I'm not gonna treat you that way. Sure. At the end of the day, the truth will be the truth, and the truth will come out. So you can say that people yeah. said this, did this. You know what it is. You know exactly who did what. And I, I hate that people hold your lips yeah. like this, and you get up here and you act like a whole different person. It saddens my yeah. heart to just see act the way you're acting right now. But right now, we keep on these. If you want to have this little cat fight, hold on, hold on. You out of order. If you want to have this little cat fight, we can have this. That's them. Right now, that's Ooh. how we're business. The gender. Trustee Carlisle accuses Hanyard of providing misleading information regarding that foundation and other financial matters. Hanyard has tried to separate herself from this foundation for, at this point, months and even a year, saying that she had nothing to do with the foundation where there's evidence of the contrary. As she losing control of this board, people are finally telling the truth that that foundation was a sham to begin with and Hanyard was responsible for it. She try to push this foundation, probably try to help her image, but she used taxpayer dollars to fund the foundation. The super mayor is losing control and people are jumping ship. At one point, she had a rubber stamp vote when it came to the Dorton Township. And now trustees are stepping up and pointing out the things that she is doing wrong and Hanyard is getting more and more stressed out and she's getting more and more frustrated. I don't trust the process, so I have to ask questions before it worked in that season where I didn't ask anything that worked. But with the board, it's not working, so I have to ask questions and I have to make sure I understand what I'm saying. Yes, and that's my job. Maybe I should do a great job before, but now with the board, I am going to do a better job of asking questions to make sure I know what's going on in the board township because I'm not just doing my job and that's why I didn't say anything to that. That's why I didn't say anything to that. The feds are here, people are getting indicted, and people need to figure out what is more important, staying loyal to the super mayor or finally telling the truth. Some of these former supporters, they decided to separate themselves and tell the truth. Hanyard is too incompetent to run these organizations. It's really as simple as that. She has done some unethical and it looks like, when we'll see from the feds, illegal practices that 
is destroying both the township and the village of Dalton. You guys wrote my name here. Do not add my name in something that I do not agree with. So for those that don't know and ain't read this, they added my name to get a car. I do not want a credit card. I do not deal with money. I don't deal with anything. Oh, shit. So before we get into this video, I have to show you guys this picture right here. This was Tiffany Henry, our super mayor, scribbling notes as the public comments were commencing, where people were pouring their heart out, giving her the business. Lastly, Tiffany, there's one comment that I've heard of your mouth that I actually agree with. And this is what she spent her time doing. This looks like some, I don't know what that is. Is that doodling? I don't know. Don't look like words on that sheet of paper. It looks like she's just making shapes. And you can tell she seems to be pretty upset about someone taking a picture of her and her doodling. So let's get into this extremely bizarre, just a bizarre meeting. This is actually dated on the 4th of August. Just trying to figure out how much money is being spent frivolously or irresponsibly, right? Because Hanyard has the reputation from Dalton is spending a lot of money irresponsibly, spending thousands of dollars on banners, Christmas lights. She likes to do things big, especially when it's not her money. She, she, will, she will do that, right? And the trustees are trying to rein in some of these issues. If you are a business, a government, your own household, everyone understands that inflation is out of control. Everyone understands that you have to tighten your budget because at this point, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I noticed that we're probably heading into some kind of recession. So the guys at Edgar County, they were able to FOIA and realize the amount of things that she was spending for basically to, for her image, to keep people happy, to keep people continue to vote for her at this big bingo contest. So if you look at some of the stuff here, so right here, Tiffany Hanger and these giveaways are giving out T-shirts, underwear, about $10,000 in gift cards, $10,000 in a Christmas event, spending $40,000 in these bingo events. 50 big screen TVs, Roku and Vizio TVs, ranging between 50 to 65 inch versions. Then you have the $1,200 worth of luggage, for, and then also this Hanyard giveaway, $47,000 in gas to private vehicles. So this is what she used to curry favor. This is what she's currently using. So the people who will benefit from these items will vote for her. So is this what the township was made for? I think it's supposed to be helping people who are in some financial issues, not giving away stuff. Like, I don't know if that's the same. The people who won these items, did they need, did someone need another 55 inch TV? So do, do people who actually need these things, you, you know, they're more like prizes, they're bonuses, but should that money go somewhere else? So the budget is a budget conflict, right? The township has been operating without a budget since April. And that's what supervisor is emphasizing the urgency to pass the budget, got to pass the budget. And she's saying that the trustees are delaying the process, arguing that they need more time to make necessary cuts and adjustments. Because at this point, the trustees believe that, no, there's not tons of money to be thrown around and spending on concerts that got rained out. But also who wants to go in that concert with this much chaos, this much, this environment of toxicness. I would not want my kids to go there. I wouldn't want my, my grandparents to go there in this environment. So the supervisor is accusing the trustees of kicking the can down the road, not fulfilling their duties, leading to a lot of frustration. So your township is running without an actual budget. Um, they had plenty of time to actually go over a budget, present a budget, and make sure that we had something to look at, whether it's something they want to take out, or in, a jazz fix, and they have not done so. So we put this on here, and they still don't have an idea of what they want to do or what they would like to change. She needs to be able to articulate this for her political survival when she runs for supervisor next year, or re-election, or what have you. So the another major point of contention is, again, the funding, trying to trim the fat. It's approval of the township's events and programs. The problem is with Hanyard is she does the zero sum game, which this is a political maneuver. When you say, well, you know what? Some of these events need to be cut. You know, some of them, like a little bit. 
she goes off the rails. What well, you trying to take away everything? You trying to take away all the things that these essential things. This is the one where they wanted to uh, remove certain things uh, that we do here at Thorn Township. One thing is uh, big bingo. I'm gonna read you the items because when I became your supervisor, it's basically all the things that I have out to Thorn Township that they want to include. So this is what I mean when I tell you that the board are targeting things that the supervisor does here at Thorn Township. Um, yet, before I got here, one not nothing going on. Uh, the numbers was 20% people knew about Thorn Township. When I came, now over 80% of our township knows that we exist and now is uh, benefiting from all the services here at Thorn Township. I don't think the trustees are necessarily saying that. They're not saying that. It's not just to eliminate these events, but to ensure proper financial oversight. So. The supervisor can list all the community initiatives that she wants, right? That's been implemented with her leadership, even though I think a lot of these things were already in existence before. Food giveaways, educational programs, community events, a lot of that was already done. How many tastes of township has there been? I think there's been 20 something of them, like every year they do it. So this is the back and forth. And again, I feel like there's a lot of that is just political, that back and forth type of thing. But then obviously dealing with the employee payments, the supervisor is frustrated. And you're saying, you know, the board does not approve of payments for the staff, despite the fact that they've completed their work. This obviously is going to always lead to tension between the people who are working and not getting paid and the trustees that they believe are withholding payment and urging them to resolve this issue. But if I work somewhere, I want to get paid, right? You work somewhere, you want to get paid. And when you're not able to get paid due to things that's not under your control, you're going to get frustrated. Does, does that mean that now he's being used as a political football? Probably. But if I was working for some, I was doing media, I was doing editing or whatever I was doing, I wasn't getting paid, I'd be pissed off. I'd be upset. I probably would have quit by now, but I don't know the situation, his personal situation, what's going on. I would, I would, yeah, this is kind of stupid and try to get the rest of the money that I owe and go do something else. That would be my move. So again, it's, it's about the financial management, but the supervisor wants to push and push for immediate action on the budget, all these things, fast, fast, fast. And the trustees are being more cautious. They want more control and oversight before moving forward. And that is creating the, the significant divide. Obviously, she, want, she put a lot of effort in explaining how the community programs are important, but it just raised more questions than answers. If Hanyan really wants these programs to continue, she should do whatever it takes to get them to be continued. So if the trustees say, we need more financial oversight, give, her the, give them the financial oversight. Because without transparency, without the proper checks and balances, these programs are going to risk becoming vehicles for basically to destroy the community rather than help the community. And Hanyer's refusal to acknowledge that these concerns or try to work collaboratively with the trustees is, is a problem. It was a problem before with, with obviously with Dalton, it's a, it's a problem here. I mean, the fact that it took, what, 20 minutes into the meeting, maybe a half an hour before another trustee had a working mic, it's deliberate. It, it is deliberate. I've seen too many of these meetings. It's deliberate. Especially when Carmen decided to speak, you couldn't hear what she was saying. Then you couldn't hear what Chris Gonzalez was saying, but you always heard when Hanyard speaks. Anytime the super mayor spoke, you heard what she had to say. So it, this is just a chaotic, terrible, like I just feel for the people who, who have to be here. Listen, I, I'm a fan of dark humor and a lot of stuff is funny. But then after a while, especially you sit there for three hours and watch this unfold, it's depressing. It's not funny. This is the life of people who have to deal with this every day. While most of us, I'm assuming most of us who watch these videos do not have to live there. Now you may live in somewhere better or somewhere worse, but you're not in this situation. And you can tell how people are, are, are getting more and more frustrated. I think a lot of this got to this point where, yeah, we're watching this and you wish that it could come to some, some kind of conclusion. And I believe it is happening. I think it's, it is happening. It's just slower in every meeting. Regardless if you're talking about the township or Dalton, under Hanyard's watch, this is a clear indication of mismanagement. It's just it's, it's embarrassing. That is what Hanyard does not want. Because clearly, the way she was behaving because of the credit card stuff. They say no, I don't listen to them. I do not listen to them. I do not. 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 That is fact. That is fact. That is fact. Um, let me tell you all know right now. What y'all write on that? I don't care what you write. I'm telling you, I'm not taking no cards. So you guys are here to try to make me take a card. Make that make sense. 
I'll be honest, I never saw her behave like that before. Like, it was like a like a desperate plea. I never really see her do that. I mean, put in the comments below, if you ever saw her speak the way she was speaking when they tried to give her or assign her a, a credit card. Leadership does not do ask thing on the card, and I'm telling you I do not want. That makes no sense. And I'm asking you guys to remove me from the court. And I'm telling you, hold up. And I'm telling you, I don't want this. I don't want this. I'm telling you, that. So, remove me from it. Remove me from it. I'm just telling y'all, I pleaded enough with y'all. I've asked y'all enough for this. So, I'm going to let it be what it be. Because I already told you I'm not taking it. I don't want it. And I think you should remove supervisor out of this order that you guys created. I'd, I'd never seen that before. The way she reacted, it was very, very odd. I can't believe she literally was like, Give me a minute. Stop. This is my life. Stop. Me, y'all, I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this. I can't help 30 years. But I'm just saying, I mean, this is her life. This is her life, y'all. This is her life. How dare you give her a credit card with her name on it? How dare you, people? She fighting for her life. I can't believe she did that. I, I, I can't believe she did that. She's losing it. That was pretty, that was weird. The board approved an ordinance to establish rules around the use of township credit cards, aiming to regulate spending and introduce some safeguards, like, you know, transparency and accountability. And Hanyard said, you're trying to kill me. Well, she didn't say that, but strongly opposed the ordinance. <laughs> she strongly opposed it particularly with the inclusion of her name on the list of authorized users. She argued as a supervisor, she does not do the day to day. She's not part of the department of, I guess the department of the budgets. She don't use credit cards. She has mentioned this in interviews. I do not handle anything as it relates to with credit cards. As you heard me speak today in my board meeting about, I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you though. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mm. I don't do anything with the credit cards. Like, I don't. So she objected, stating that the board failed to consult the staff who already handle a day-to-day -day operations, and she emphasized that the current spending limits were unrealistic and did not deflect the actual needs of the departments. And she was kind of like begging a little bit. So she has two jobs. She's the mayor of Dalton, and she's the supervisor of the township. If you are watching something on TV or on your phone or whatever on the internet. And Laurie Lightfoot states $40,000 were spent on Amazon. And you realize, well, this, this person's our, our supervisor over here in township and she's giving all that money to Jeff Bezos. This is our life. Maybe we need to, to rein it in on the spending here. And then before, you know, a couple of days ago, there was two R&B acts that played with a very small amount of people and those people had to get paid a lot of money. So I think as a trustee, you would look at this situation and you realize, you know what? This is probably not a good idea. Maybe we need to rein it in a little bit. And she just, you know, Hanger just was losing it. She was begging. She was begging. But the problem is she mixed too many different things. So in the meeting, one of the trustees asked a question about the conflict of interest when it comes to Hanger's legal representation. Check it out right here. So, uh I know that uh, you selected this attorney for these cases, but um, it came to my attention that this attorney represents you in a personal matter. So I, uh, so I, I just want to know, is that a conflict of interest? <laughs> so first of all, I didn't necessarily uh, pick the attorney. Um, he do represent myself, Keith Freeman and other people as well is represented by this law firm. So we had to put it on here so that the person can go and represent us here at the township. So he don't just represent Tiffany and you, he represents everybody that they name. Anybody that got name is in here. So for us to see and go back and forth over legal help, the whole thing is to protect the township. That's what the township. Now the problem is with her statement, and thank you, Steph Wiedemann, for this information, that the lawyer that is here with a personal case that's going after Tiffany Hanyard is the same lawyer that's being used for the township, as you see right here. So what 
is she talking about? Looks like a personal lawyer to me. It's not Stephanie Wienemann versus Township. It's Tiffany Hayard. This is a personal lawsuit. The super mayor is claiming that that this attorney is solely representing the township. It doesn't seem that is true. It does seem like there is a conflict of interest. You have the same attorney representing both Hanyard personally and the township in other matters. This form shows that Hanyard is being represented by the attorney in a personal capacity. Remove my name. I'm not supposed to have my name on anything because that's what she's going to use for her defense. Whenever the, the feds hit, she'll say, listen, I had no, my name was not on any of these credit cards. I didn't, me personally, didn't spend anything. That's the village administrator, Keith Freeman, go after him. I don't know what's going on. I don't, I'm not responsible for the day to day. I don't know what's happening with the money. I don't know anything. I just show up and I talk a lot and that's it. That seems like that's going to be her defense. But the problem is as a supervisor, right, township supervisor, she has a responsibility to ensure that all the financial operations are conducted transparently and within the bounds of fiscal responsibility. Not spending a lot of money on, on Jay Holiday and Kiki Wyatt. All right, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know any Kiki Wyatt songs. And I know Jay Holiday's song is that one song, Bet. But how much money did he, did he had to pay for that? Was that? Is that responsible? Plausible deniability. Perfect word. She's like, well, if my name is not on these things... I don't email because Keith Freeman mentioned that in deposition. She does not email. If I get an email that says she has not reviewed something, then it won't go on the agenda. And that email would come from the mayor herself or a contractor or a vendor. The mayor doesn't send emails. That sounds like a very effective mayor. Is that because of her education problems? Maybe. But it's also no trail of her doing anything. I mean, she got in trouble when she signed for that Tahoe. But if she's not putting her name on stuff, there's no email sent coming back to her about what's being spent and what isn't. She can just back up and say, I have no idea what's happening. I guess they were doing a lot of things and I was impervious to it. So the opposition to this law bothers her because now she can't distance herself because that's what she's doing. She's designing a desire to distance herself for potential scrutiny from the feds. But the problem is with that, it raised a lot of red flags about her commitment to being a government that, that is being transparent. Why you can't have a credit card with your name? Why you can't have that responsibility? Hanger's argument that department heads should handle all budgetary responsibilities without her oversight. But that's flawed. You need to over, you need to look at this stuff. You don't want people just spending a whole bunch of money underneath your watch because you're still the supervisor. So yes, it's true that department heads should manage daily operations, but the supervisor must provide guidance that's what a supervisor, it's in the word, supervise, to ensure that all budgeting and all spending aligns with the township's overall financial strategy. And by her refusing to be in this process, Hanyard is just appearing to escape her duties. And, that's, and that could lead to unchecked spending, potential mismanagement. Oh, I can't touch this. I, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know where the money's going. I don't know who's, and I don't want my name on a credit card. I'll tell you this, if your name is on a credit card, you would make sure that credit card is being spent responsibly, wouldn't you, right? The one time that I had, I was a manager and I had a company credit card. I made sure that that card was in a good, safe location because my name is on it. And it's not necessarily my money, but my name is on that credit card. And I will not allow someone else to grab that credit card without me telling them what to do and bringing a receipt because I'm not gonna be, be responsible for that. So like there's certain things you do when you have you have that kind of responsibility. Ryan says a forensic audit does need to be needed. Clearly, because we need to figure out exactly a few things. Is 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 the township in a surplus? But if you are living in the township and if you're living in Dalton, everything you should take everything and research it. Even the people you don't like, even the people that are saying things that you don't appreciate. If they said it, look it up and see if it's true. What what do it hurt? At least when they say it again, you can say, Well, I looked this up, it wasn't true. But if they say it, remove the emotion, remove the anger. Who cares what they look like or what they're saying? Look it up. I know one person was asking how much money these people earn. There's a website called Open the Books. There's places where you could tr you could find this information. Yeah, it's kind of boring, but I think if if you're if you're there and you're voting and you really care about what's going on, you need to research everything. And I mean that everything. What is the best interest of the township? Are those, are those priorities actually being met? When you have the history of Doug Aldo and his connection with the Speaker of the House, Chris Welsh, and I think Michael Madigan that went that had issues with corruption, all these people are connected to Kwame Wawel, the Attorney General. 
It's the reason why these people are not speaking about this. J.B. Prisker said maybe he's probably spent like a minute talking about this weeks ago. Thornton Township and leadership there. Are you concerned? Taxpayers seem very worried. There's chaos at meetings. What can be done? Could you play a role in stepping in in some way? The federal authorities, as you may know, are involved and in, in investigating. I, I've read that. I think that's a public um, piece of information. Uh, there is an investigation that's been called for now. Well, we again, we, we looked at whether we ought to put resources, whether it's state police and their anti-corruption efforts, or asking the attorney general. The reality is that we already there are already two pretty significant investigations going on, and so we'll support them in every way that we can. Uh, that's why as much as Dalton residents and township residents are going in flooding the social media accounts of Kwame Raul, he they just they're just hiding them and they're, they're just turning off the comments. He is not going to speak about this. I'm sure they were told we're not going to talk about this. The only thing that I think they did was throw, I guess, the people who are upset about this a bone by saying, well, the comptroller, go ahead. You can, you know, freeze the offset funds. That should keep them happy. But other than that, we ain't talking about that because the DNC is here. We got to make sure that every Democrat is on the same page. We got to beat Trump and blah, 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 blah. This is just out of hand. I know it's not a lot of people. This is not Chicago. You know, it's not like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. You know, this is not a major place. But a lot of people know Dalton. They know about the township. They know about this story. And they're not putting enough to show that they care. Like, hey, we hear you. Just say, you know what? We really hear you. And this is a high concern for us. And we'll look into it. Except these small little gestures, it's just not helping the situation. I think Hanyard right now does not want to collaborate, does not want to work with other trustees. These are very critical issues. They need to get the budget going. This just has, this is a fractured relationship. I, I say the same thing about Dalton for the residents. Next year can't come fast enough until the feds do something or at this point, the feds, the state, the state basically washed their hands. They don't care. If they did, they would do something. They don't care. The feds got to do something or next year you guys have to you know, go to the polls and figure it out amongst yourselves. I think the feds are moving really slowly. The indictments on Freeman and Lacey are big deals. Very, very big deals. It's the strategy. Even Lacey's lawyer mentioned it. It's to grab the, the small guys to get the big guy. Will Lacey stand on business and, and don't snitch and, and just go through the motions because it looks like I don't know how he's going to beat this bankruptcy charge and federal prison is, is you know you got to complete a lot of that time you're not getting out early and if they say you know what we'll let you pass with this bankruptcy nonsense but you got to tell us what's going on with Hanyer and kind of explain what the things that she did wrong same thing with Freeman Freeman I think this point is she knows that's why she wants to fire him and that's why I have this all back big back and forth with what's going on he's definitely probably talking to the feds and I think her protection is, well, you know what? My name is not on anything. That's it. My name is on nothing. I don't mess with the credit cards. So even if I am overspending and spending ridiculous amount of money on these banners, these pamphlets with my name on them, these trips, all these things, well, my name, it's, it's Freeman that has his name on all a bunch of these things. It's not mine. So I think at this point, you know, with the trustees, I guess on both sides, they're trying to prevent potential financial issues and crises that could have devastating effects on the township. But in Hanier's perspective, she's, everything is great. It's a surplus. They're just cutting out everything that you seniors, you people at the township need. They're just cutting it. They're vicious, angry people. The problem is like that back and forth stuff is going to happen every meeting. I don't really know more that could come from it in terms of, yeah, a forensic audit. We need to know what's going on with the, with the money. And I'm talking, we am talking about the township. But other than that, the, the way, you know, the back and forth in, in the meeting, the, the yelling out, cursing each other out, like that to me, like I said, if I, if I didn't have to stream it, if I was there, I would have left early. If I had, if I was working, clearly doing, you know, content, you, you're filming, then you, I, yeah, I would have to stay. But if I was just a citizen just sitting there and it's a Tuesday evening and it's getting late, I have to go to work tomorrow or and I don't know if you guys have a uh, school starting over here not it didn't, didn't happen yet over well, in New York City but and I gotta get up early and take my kid to school I'm going home you know I'm going home what 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 else is there to talk about other than this now is just you know the back and forth which you've already seen in, in many of these meetings let me see what what ordinances which ones were approved let me see a look so the credit card use that was passed 
I think they're going to kick the can down the road with the, with the budget, right? But the, the credit card use was definitely passed, and she is really, really mad about that. Please, why you have my name on the card? Why are you doing this? This is my life. I can't believe she said that. This is, this is my life. This has been your life. You've been doing this the whole time. Like that really bothered her. That and I and I've never seen her beg. I've never seen her. I th- she always at least have this this facade of kind of in control. She's a little nasty. She you know she'll sneak this. She'll do what she has to do, and she'll talk over you. But I never saw her behave that way. That was that was, that was quite something. So thank you, Paul Roberts, for that. The median age for a township is sixty, and that that's her strategy to get reelected. Spend a lot of money on giveaways. Bingo is a big deal with the seniors. I think that's her strategy. I think she realized, she thinks that a lot of people who are probably older are not checking out a lot of content, probably not watching too much news. And she thinks, well, if I, if I could just, this, this is a strategy. If I could show that trustees don't care and they're not paying people, and I can show that I'm really, really caring and I can give you a 65 inch TV and I could throw out a lot of events and, and really focus on all those events. Cause those, that's her bread and butter. I'll, I'll help you with your, you know, technology. I can help you with this. I can help you with that. I can help you with all types of things. Grass cut all those things that when it's time for them to vote, they're going to vote for Tiffany Henry unless she's not here. Like at this point, she, at this point, the rubber stamp vote that she had a year ago is gone. You got, you got trustee Jones and Carlisle is, is kind of coming along with Gonzalez. They're, they, they are realizing that this is a problem and we need to rein her in. And she is fighting tooth and nail. She's she's like a toddler. She doesn't want this to happen. But there's a lot of questions. There's a lot. There's a lot of things to research. To be honest, so to, to some of the stuff that 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 some of the people said, especially those in the comment section, I think I, I probably have to spend some time to look some of this stuff up. To yeah, why this is going on, but this is going on. Like that. That's a concern. If I was a resident, I, I would be concerned. Like okay, so let's let's get the transparency fully. Everybody. What is going on here? What's going on there? Why this is happening here? What's not happening here? So. Oh boy. You out of order. You out of order. But again, people run store because they got national platforms and y'all run fake store. That's why I call them fake news all the time. They never give y'all the truth. So I just want to break it down. So another Thornton Township meeting is in the books. And the biggest thing that I've learned so far as covering the super mayor for as long as I have is that she really loves cake. $400 Calumet Bakery, $252 cake for senior event. 401 Calumet Bakery, $126. Oh, I like cake, man. I love, I love cake. As usual, there's tons of budget disagreements between the super mayor and the trustees. Or I should say the supervisor. The board has not passed the budget, which caused several proposals and events to be rejected. Is there a motion? Is there a second? All right, second. Any discussion? <laughs> Call her. Trustee Gray Everett. Trustee Gonzalez. No. Trustee Jones. No. Trustee Carlisle. No. Supervisor Henry. Yes. Motion failed. All right. Is there a motion to approve the house fest? No gospel fest. Call her. Trustee Gray Everett. Trustee Gonzalez? No. Trustee Jones? <coughs> Trustee Carlisle? No. Supervisor Henry? Yes. Motion failed. Next Damn. one agenda, is there a motion to approve bingo? <coughs> no bingo, I don't think. The trustees are putting their control on the township, and the super mayor isn't very happy about that. The supervisor, Tiffany Hayard emphasized that the budget had to be submitted to the necessary departments, but there was still resistance from the trustees. Trustees are still looking for more control, more transparency, and that pisses her off. Okay, so who fault is that that we don't have a past budget? I put it on here several times for you guys to do your job, to come here and vote for a budget, and you all say no. You vote and you say no after no after no. 
And then it's on agenda again today. So what's your excuse for not doing what you're supposed to do? And anybody that knows how to work, you still do operations. Operations don't stop because you guys chose not to pass a budget. That's your job. Your job is to legislate and pass a budget. People get mad when I say, let me educate you. And that's why you go to Damn it. I should have brought my bingo card. Because without the education piece, you would not know what to do and how to operate. So many of hanging events like the Gospel Fest and the Big Bingo event was proposed but voted down. And Super Mayor was really upset about that. Tiffany Hayne accused the trustees of purposely shutting down these initiatives without proper reasoning or dialogue. There were claims that the trustees were not working in the best interest of the residents and they were purposely obstructing progress on various projects. So that's what we need. So the way y'all operate is just to stop the township resources for going out the door. And for those that don't know, because I'm getting my report, we got a nine million surplus in Thorne Township. So stop saying we ain't got no money. So I just want to clear that up. So it ain't got nothing to do with money. I just want people to know. Here at Thorne Township, got nothing to do with money with the trustees. It's all about their emotions, their feelings, their hatred, their envy, their jealousy of their supervisor. Oh, is what this is all about. Geez. It ain't about nothing else but that. Because if y'all can clear that up and push that to the side, Typical political movement and gaslighting from Hanyard trying to figure out how can I get the trustees to look as bad as possible because she needs the votes of those seniors and those people that are in the township. She needs to make sure that, that they all know that she's doing everything possible to give them what they need and the trustees are trying to stop them. And that's why Tiffany Hanyard repeatedly pointed out the board's inactions were harming the township's residents, particularly the seniors who benefit from these events that they were being blocked. She puts a strong focus on the importance of community programs and the board's responsibility to support them. Just a lot of political maneuvering, a lot of rhetoric coming from the super mayor. And an interesting thing talking about those bingo games. Let's check out something real quick. So checking out the Agar County Watchdogs website, the Dorton Township violating bingo license and tax act. Is it possible that a Tiffany Harry is doing some kind of bingo scam act to try to get people to continue to vote for? So check this out right here. Facebook user Joy Sherber noticed that the Illinois Bingo License and Tax Act permits local government to conduct bingo games subject to the restriction of a $10 maximum prize value for each game without the need to obtain a license. Local governments are not eligible for bingo license but they can conduct games subject to this restriction in the act. And you see the act right here, section 1.39 of the Bingo License and Tax Act states the following. Restrictions on licensure. Licensing for the conducting of bingo acts is subject to the following restrictions. So it's right here. Senior citizen organizations and unit of local government may conduct bingo without a license or fee subject to the following conditions. The aggregate license value of all prizes or merchandise awarded in any one game in bingo should not exceed $10. Now, the problem is with Bing Bingo, all the prizes are way more than $10. They're big screen TVs, they're refrigerators, there's some really nice, awesome things. So it's possible she's violating the law, which is not a big surprise. And the penalty for this is under the Section 5 of the Act prescribes penalties for these violations as a Class A misdemeanor under the Illinois Criminal Code and could subject violators to fines up to $5,000. So more problems for the super mayor. But again, what else is new? So again, they're going back and forth, especially with the ongoing budget and payment disputes. Most of the discussion continue to be around the budget approvals and payment authorizations. There are specific disputes about credit card payments and the lack of competitive bidding for contracts over $30,000. Trustees raise concerns about vendors being paid through credit cards without proper board approval, citing township law. And obviously, Again, Hanyard did not agree with that as well. And then finally, at 85-30, requires that all contracts for goods and services over $30,000 must be subject to competitive bidding. Um, and then I'm going to skip down to uh, the bottom of this. It says, there is a clear case law that states that when a contractor decides to do business with a public entity, they should use due care to ensure their work has been or will be approved. Because without board approval, there is no valid contract and no obligation to pay. So we're operating for expenditures that haven't even been approved yet. So how are we spending money in a department that hasn't been approved? Right. And so again, and then not only that, but who runs this department? 
who authorizes the payments for this department, and why are a lot of the vendors that need to come through board for approval being paid on the credit card? Okay, so let me clear up a couple of things for you. Uh, once again, I told you guys who Karma was prior to being the trustee. She was the assistant. Yeah. She we, knows we know exactly we know. the steps and how this all works. She was on the administrative side, so she processed all of this that she's now complaining about. So now with that being said, she knows how the day-to-day -day operates. Uh, you guys had nothing in place, so let's be crystal clear. Nothing in place here at Thorne Township, so people can stop ooh and I. If you don't have nothing in place saying, hey, this is your cap for spending, this is what you can do, can't do, and these are the laws. So stop it. So when you guys go and say, hey, they spent, he named $60, $100, $50, peanuts. That's what he named that was being spent as it relates to day-to-day -day operation. As long as you guys have a receipt, you guys are supposed to go to the clerk's office, check the receipt to make sure everything's there and they did what they're supposed to do. That's what you guys are supposed to do, right? But you guys was not doing that. Tiffany Hayde with the rhetoric of repeating and emphasizing that the trustees were obstructing the day-to-day -day operations, accusing them of acting based on emotion and personal grievances rather than the township's needs. There was a frustration that the trustees were rejecting initiatives and events for the residents, such as the back to school events or senior events without providing valid reasons. Or she just pretending that she doesn't understand what the trustees are looking for, or what they're asking for. It was that constant back and forth Issues that we've seen in, at this point in every township and every Dalton meeting. And of course, the super mayor really wanted not to be on that credit card. A significant issue was that authorization and the use of credit cards for township operations. The supervisor stated that the department heads should be controlled over the credit cards. But there was a pushback from the board to have the supervisor's name tied to the credit cards. The supervisor argued that this setup was illegal and impractical and led to a personal liability for them for the day-to-day -day department purchases. I think the issue is here that they want to make sure that if she's going to spend money, that her name is on it. I'm crystal clear at the last meeting that I do not or will not accept any credit card. Uh, as being the supervisor, I never have a credit card ever here, so why would you want to give me a card now? That's another big red flag. And then why wouldn't you give it to the staff? Because they actually run the day-to-day -day operation. That's checks and balances, that's accountability, that's transparency. But when there was one credit card when I got here, that's what all the theft was. They were still. And I told the news, I told y'all, I told everybody. But nobody wanted to read or say anything about the stories about the theft. Because again, you're trying to make somebody take something they don't want. Y'all nothing? Crickets? All right, so tomorrow uh, to the staff, make sure y'all come to the board of trustees with y'all problems. One of the tactics of Hania trying to get away from any kind of trouble is the fact that she has no name on anything. So she could always say that I didn't pay for it. I didn't, I don't have a credit card. When things start to fall apart and people can get in trouble, well, she doesn't have her name on a credit card. She could walk away scot-free. And when you listen to her federal defense attorney, that's precisely the defense. She doesn't have any name on a credit card, so she's good to go. The FBI served subpoenas on the village and township earlier this year. He blames Henyard's top aide, Keith Freeman. Keith Freeman made the decision on how these funds are being used. Keith Freeman is going on these trips. You understand, this is a new mayor. Uh, this is someone that is new to this job. But she never thought, hey, I shouldn't fly first class. I shouldn't stay at the Four Seasons. If there was a problem with any of that, if that's not how you're supposed to do it, she relied on Freeman to tell her. He's telling her this is how we do things. One of the highlights of the meeting, or if you can call it the lowlights, if you wanted to take a nap, it was when Robert Hunt had to read all of the items that was spent, that was not paid for. And I think in this situation, the supervisor thought this was a good move. You know what? Robert Hunt, get up there and read all of the things that they are not paying for, the things that are helping out the township. And it was a series of nonsense. Robert, come on up here. <laughs> what's these items that they don't want to uh, read into reference and they don't want people to know what's going on? Calumet Bakery, um, Bingo Cake, Cake for Bingo. 79 Calumet Bakery, $47.40. Cake, cake for bingo. Cake, student workers, lunch cake. 81, number 81, Calumet Bakery. 82 Calumet Bakery, $47.40. 
senior home being okay. Calumet Bakery, $96. Senior home being okay for Royal Estate. 86, Calumet Bakery, senior home car, $126.60. Uh, transportation for Kiki Watt. 89, uh, Chicago Black Car. Um, uh, 80, 88 Chicago Black Car, $126.60 transportation for Kiki Watt. 89 Chicago Black Car, $304.46 transportation for Kiki Watt. What? 300 and what? 90 Chicago Black Car, $126.60 transportation for Tate's for Kiki Watt. Big Bingo Desserts Cupcakes. 123 JJ Fish and Chicken, $73.51. Texas Thornton Food, Calumet Bakery, $252. Cake for senior event. Robert Hunt slowly, methodically, and in the most boring way possible, read every single item. Shout out to Amazon and shout out to Calumet City Bakery. Make They're making a lot of money. I don't know about everyone else, but they are running away with the bag on this one. Another interesting thing was the fake news allegations. So during the supervisor's address, she took the time to address what she considers fake reports about the township expenses, particularly surrounding the township event. The Taste of Thornton Township provided detailed financial breakdowns to show that apparently the media was lying. She called liar Bill Bradley about how much money that actually was spent. She is accusing the media outlets of inflating the numbers and spreading misinformation. They, they have no time to complete the video, but when fake news report videos, and yeah, it was a live being, with red being, I don't know if you behind the camera, lying being. Uh, I am been. Uh, <laughs> Y'all there about four townships, and this is how they are with your supervisor slash super mayor, right? They made a report about Thornton Township about the taste of Thornton. As I stated to y'all before, the taste of Thornton was voted on by the Board of Trustees, was approved uh, expenditures, but they didn't report any of that, right? So in doing so, he inflated numbers to say one thing, and the truth is the truth, right? He did a FOIA, I have a FOIA right here, just the FOIA that being did, and he reported that we spent this type of money right here, 30000 for key key. Uh, Jay Holiday 20, and then some other performance which we did not have, but people like to make stuff up on us all the time. And he said it cost this Thornton Township $135,000. $32,000 right here was the breakdown, right here for what it was that we were supposed to do for Take the Thornton. Next slide. $50,000 was for the agency, as you can see, for the performance. And he said that we spent all this money, and that's not the truth, right? Because the truth was set you free. So here we go. Next slide. We spent the grand total eighty-three thousand dollars. Eighty-three thousand dollars what the township spent. That's still a lot. So y'all know it's less than what Frank Zuccarelli spent for all the tape that they ever did. But did y'all for you that? Did anybody ask any questions? His last case was one hundred and sixty. I'm finding to be the exact number. He spent. He put it up. Oh, you put it up. Okay, 103. Yeah. So I'm glad. Thank you. Is that true? Putting this together so quick. So that's what he spent in 2018. This what we spent in 2024, as mm. you can see. But again, people run stories because they got national platforms, and y'all run fake stories. So I call them fake news all the time. They never give y'all the truth. So I just want to break it down. Now the news said it was about 130 something thousand dollars. She's saying it's 80. Then she compared it to what? The previous administration has done all of this is the back and forth politics back and forth who's who's really at fault who isn't at the end of the day the, the residents are in a really difficult position they don't know what's going on because everyone is saying the other person is stealing it's a confusing situation all the way around especially when you see mr dots the i guess the village administrator now of dalton fighting hard to make sure that everyone looks bad except Tiffany Hayard, trying to throw everyone under the bus, throwing Carlisle under the bus, throwing Gonzalez, trying to get the situation as chaotic as possible so everyone can kind of, so no one knows what's going on and they'll probably vote for the person that's giving them cake. You know, just, you know, Tiffany Hayard's giving me all this cake, you know, and then I can, I win a, 
a refrigerator and bingo. You know, I'm a vote for her. She seems to be really nice. The seniors and the children are being used as pawns in this back and forth nonsense. And speaking of body language, Trustee Jones had his back turned away from Hanyard almost the entire meeting. He is not happy, clearly, and showed that he didn't even want to see Tiffany Hanyard. Tiffany Hanyard obviously has lost control of the township and Dalton, and she is fighting hard to put herself as the victim, as someone that she is trying to do something totally different, trying to clean up everything, and everyone else is lying. And the problem is she still has not provided proof of this situation, of the proof of the $9 million surplus that she has. But at the end of the day, it's all about, for many of us who are watching this story, is she a great leader? Is she a competent leader? Is she spending the money in the most efficient way possible? I think many people will probably say no. But most of us are trying to wonder, is she committing a crime? Or is she just really, really incompetent? What the feds are asking the questions to basically everyone in that circle, does Tiffany Hayard get arrested by the federal authorities? 